All right, this is Randalicious. Welcome to the 85th Hexus Podcast. We're happy with the podcast being back. Thank you to everyone who watched and supported us with the return. It's only been two weeks since the last one, but we have a lot to talk about. The uh, podcast is going to be planned for at least twice a month now. Um, and one thing that I'm going to look into doing and let, let me guys know in the chat, whether it be like in the YouTube comments or in the Twitch chat, thinking on and maybe having like the the general Hexus podcast every two weeks and uh, during the off week in between, maybe having like a shorter duration, almost like a spotlight where it's, you know, me and another member of Hexus uh, having like a brief little podcast. So like a member spotlight kind of thing. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. But some topics included in this podcast are going to be sailing, shooting stars, the hunter guild, dead man mode, and more. Again, thanks all for the support after the return of the podcast two weeks ago uh, across YouTube, Twitch, and Spotify. We had over 2,000 views. So thank you guys. Let's get to it. I'm Randalicious, and I'm the leader of Hexus. Yo, I'm Onyx, formerly known as Onyx. Um, rank 59,906, and I'm a Hexus mod. I'm Fimbriel, officer in Hexus. I'm Mutations, Ultimate Iron Man, Hexus, working towards Max. I'm Yistra, and I'm a Omnia 2 Banana. Never four, and I'm a recruit in Omnia. <laughs> Alright, so this and all future podcasts are going to be available on YouTube, Twitch, and Spotify. If you guys want to submit topics for any future podcasts, uh, you can do so in a channel that we have in our server called Submit a Topic. We'll give you a shout out uh, for your topic being on. With, uh, mutations in Fimbria, what made you guys initially want to make an Iron Man and what have you found to be the most challenging aspects of the game mode so far? Um, so I actually play Ultimate Iron Man. Um, it was kind of something I stumbled across uh, early in 2016 uh, and I thought it'd be challenging and unique to complete achievements on and everything I've done in the game mode has Everything I've done in game has been learned on the game mode from like my first fire cape to learning skilling methods um, to Zora. Um, and then I think space management is like one of the most challenging parts of it. Cool. Yeah. Well, for me, I just hated playing alts and RNG. The biggest challenge for Iron Man is probably RNG because. During PVM, you just kind of like have to pray that you land a good item at a good drop rate. And thankfully, I didn't go too dry on many things like a Dragon Warhammer. I got it like on 500 KC, but yeah, that's probably why I stick to skilling. What was the worst luck that you had RNG-wise? Well, I think recently with Bardorvis, I went uh, 2.7k dry for the ring. All right. It's a one in one K. I, I feel your pain. Yeah, it's... yeah, the big thing is just like, I hate playing alt. So you d thankfully on Iron Man, you don't really need to play them. Yeah, it's one thing about like playing on a main that I've really, like for a good period of time, I enjoy doing, but now it feels almost like a chore. Yeah. You're like the biggest alt machine, though. <laughs> nine, nine alts. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to just uh, not having to do it when sailing, unfortunately, comes out. I mean, I just assume they won't be useful for that, but I guess we'll see what happens. Probably will. Yeah. You could do troll loop, slip, or sailing, <laughs> sailing, or your alts. Yeah, I, I, I've got a... You know, sneaking suspicion that uh, with, with like having your your ship and your crewmates, that there's gonna be a role that gets the most XP on the ship, and we're gonna find ourselves in like a room crafting situation where you got like, all right, you're the captain of the ship, and you're now just paying other runners or oh god, I mean, essentially no plus twelve in the sea, <laughs> yeah, legit. <laughs> so that'll that'll like definitely see Dolo being met up like on sailing or some ship like yeah. that. Yeah. All right. Well, one of the things that came out was the Path of Gluffery. It's a new quest uh, that was released as a sequel to the Eyes of Gluffery. Uh, have you guys completed the quest, and what did you think about it? Um, I have not completed it. 
And I really don't like quests, so I plan on doing everything I can to avoid ever touching it. Yeah. The reason it's particular the quest hey. <laughs> uh i geez I, well for one i'm like i always fuck up on them so like i'll i'll end up like having to run around like three times more than i'm supposed to so there's that and then i don't know i just i just want to keep skilling i don't want to have to waste my time like running around the map doing a bunch of shit that i don't want to do so yeah have you tried the questing plugin yeah, that's i did and dude it fucked me over like twice the two in the what? past, like three quests. Uh, in MM2, I can't remember exactly where, but like it was, it was in like some cave, <clears throat> and it had me going down the wrong path, and I kept going down where the quest, the uh, quest helper plugin was telling me to go, and like I fucked up for like it was like twenty minutes, and I was like, all right, something's wrong here, and then finally like looked at the wiki and and figured it out right away, but yeah, yeah, I'm uh, I'm basically in quest. the same boat with like the questing i'm probably just not going to do it unless it becomes like a prereq for i don't know some other quest like that as like a standalone quest i probably would never touch because the rewards just seem pointless oh well uh you're gonna need it for the block list right yeah yeah i guess if they i guess we're gonna get to that but like if they do yeah. add that then yeah i'll definitely do it i think it passed i think actually no i think it's gonna be pulled now but that shit should definitely go past. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it wasn't really memorable. It's kind of one of those stepping stone quests that lead to a larger one. And this one's going to lead to, uh, what's it called? The uh, Wild Guthix Sleeps. That's the one that gave like Dragon Claws. So I'll be, it'll be interesting to see like what kind of reward they add to that quest. But yeah. Have they talked about I that do... coming? Uh, I think they teased it, but they haven't really, like, said it. Yeah. Did, um, Divination come from while Guthic Sleeps, or am I wrong with that? Nah, I think Guthic Sleeps, uh, came out in 2008. Okay. Um, uh, but I, I do... No. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I do like that, the uh, Trident, or what's it called? The Warp Trident? If it's in... Yeah, it fits in between the Trident and the Ibn staff. And I do like that they're fleshing out like the early and mid game. I like the way it looks. It looks really cool. Yep. All right. Um, I have completed the quests because I have to get a quest cape. Um, and the Scepter is interesting because it kind of allows me to do some stuff earlier as an ultimate without getting the trident like i'm probably gonna use it for the zora kill like for the diary um and it'll help with the desert treasure 2 bosses when i eventually get to that um but otherwise it's not much use outside of that i haven't done it but i'm planning on doing it uh pretty soon since i saw that with the desert treasure 2 uh quest being on the questing plugin um I'm going to do all the quests and hopefully get everything taken care of uh, before sailing comes out. But obviously that's in a long time, but I was thinking on doing the remaining quests. I have got seven quests that I have not uh, yet completed, so I'm going to be getting around to that. Yeah, they uh, stack up. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. I, I, I can't remember the last quest that I uh, did. Uh, like on my main account, thinking about it, like chronologically when that would have uh, happened. A couple years, I think. But... Dude, Istra, how many quest points do you have? <laughs> he uh, hates quests more than me. <laughs> 189, and I did 99 Damn. slow with three block slots. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> so crazy. You, you know, there's only one other person that I've heard of that has done something like that. And you'll either be honored or, um, <laughs> you know, I, is uh, Miss, Mr. DMP himself did oh, like 60 mil uh, XP or something like what that. What a comparison. Locks. Oh, <laughs> like, like, what? It was <laughs> like he, he did thousands of hours of Slayer with uh, um, like a regen bracelet because, you know, he didn't even have recipe for disaster done. 
I don't got that shit done either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate I mean, you know, Dragon Slayer much. 1 done. Yeah, that was going to say that. Dragon Slayer 1 is actually kind of nice that I have done, though. Yeah, because I don't I get Dragon Slayer recently. You got some big shoes to fill there. <laughs> yeah. And when I maxed, I had no achievement diaries done. Not a single easy <laughs> one done. Spacked. All right, so it was briefly mentioned, but um, the hold on, let me uh, just remove this part here. So with that quest coming out, um, the maximum amount of quest points is being increased to three hundred, uh, and they're pulling a potential new block to give you a sixth uh, Slayer block. Do you think that this is needed? What do you think about the impact that it has on the skill? Um, I think. A new Slayer block makes sense as it's kind of like following suit for I believe what like every fifty quest points. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't know how some other people feel about it, but I will be taking full advantage of it as I plan to do ninety nine Slayer here in like one to two weeks. So I'm pretty happy about it if it passes. It's. I don't think it's a matter of if it passes. It's will it be above ninety percent or not. <laughs> and Definitely. I, well, like, it, it'll, it, do you want? Do you want more blocks for no extra work? That shit could be a hundred percent. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, <laughs> I've got faith that there's one person that votes no. Just as there are, although Cap although King. All, although the yeah, Cap King, <laughs> like all, sure. all, all, although the ratio of people <laughs> that vote yes to everything without reading everything, like it's probably a thousand to one ratio of people that vote yes to everything without reading it. There are some people that vote no to everything without reading it. So that is me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that it's kind of unnecessary. And the reason why is because a lot of the um, different types of w w when they initially expanded it and we got up to 250 quest points, I felt like that was OK at the time. But they've given us, you know, obviously the idea is you do more quests, you unlock more monsters. You don't want to do those as Slayer tasks. So therefore, you get a block to avoid doing that. Well, they have so many different tasks that are. Like you're able to just block them or not opt into them with that. Like Fossil Island Wyverns is one example. Uh, like th there's just a lot of different just other kinds of blocks that they already give that are like optional that I feel like it's not really necessary. But it's going to increase XP per hour. People are going to benefit from it. It's got no chance of uh, not passing. So... You know, when I eventually get to doing some, if I get around, I should say not eventually, if I get around to some, like, uh, boss slayer, like, I'm going to have to make sure that all the quests are definitely completed before doing it so I can get that six block. Yeah, that's what I was basically going to say. It's like, I think it's fine that there's a another block coming in, but, like, I feel like the only people that are going to be really, like, I guess, like, stoked about it is, like, PVMers going for like speed runs, like stuff like that. Cause I mean, Slayer's already so fast that like I feel like skillers don't really care about a six block. I mean, I guess it's like kind of nice, but I mean, it's a little slow for me. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you am. But I don't know. I feel like people doing like Inferno speeds will probably like having a six block. Yeah, um, I don't really care about it to be honest. It makes sense, I guess, every 50 quest points that is following the theme. Um, just one of the few guaranteed things the life slay is just going to get quicker and this is an update that's doing that so I don't really care too much who knows how, if I'll ever get the 6 block slot <laughs> yeah I mean like I'll probably vote no just because I don't know I'm like kind of a traditionalist I don't think that we need it but I mean I'm not like the, the game breaking or anything like, I don't care too much but I mean as long as I mean, they have released some quests where I feel like where they, uh, you like auto get, um, assigned like monsters, even if you just for doing the quest, like the Dragon Slayer or whatever that we were talking about earlier. So, I mean, it's kind of nice that, <clears throat> like, if they're, if they, like, the, with that, this kind of cancels that out a little bit. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, 
Uh, I'll probably I'll probably vote no though. I don't think that it's super necessary. Yeah, I don't think they needed to pull it in the sense that it's gonna pass anyway. But I do like that they're like keeping XP rates in mind, and it's only annoying for the people that are trying to slay right now efficiently. So that kind of sucks, but. I do think it's good to uh, pull these from now on because eventually you'll just have a really good Slayer task. Like Randy said, uh, a lot of tasks nowadays are opt-in. So yeah. Yeah, yeah or they get, or they give like that lump sum block that you're able to do as well. Like I think it's like 500 Slayer points, and you get like the permanent block of the the Fossil Island Wyverns as an example. Or if they just make it so that you could like swap your block list around from like other things, then I feel like adding extra blocks just becomes irrelevant. Like if you go to like, I don't know, like the Wildy Master, because I know people keep asking for that, so eventually it's going to come into the game. Like I, I feel like it will. Yeah, and they'll probably make it to where you can have a Wildy task and uh, like a regular task uh, at the yeah, same time. Yeah, people want it to be like every Slayer Master has like their own block list. So if you go do like oh. Neeb Slayer for like Boss yeah, Slayer, hard. like then it's like, why do you even need another block? <laughs> yeah, that would be probably way more powerful than yeah. a uh, than that, because then you could have like certain blocks for like Duradel, and then yeah, exactly. certain blocks on me, and, uh, and you know you don't get the block that you want. It. That that sounds fucked. Yeah, I also saw like some Reddit posts where they wanted like if you got like a dragon task, it'd just be any dragon. So it's like like the people out there. That's why I want to vote no to it. Just it won't matter, <laughs> yeah. but. That's just defeating the point of Slayer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Some unpulled changes were made to Shooting Stars to where Shooting Stars now no longer deplete faster with other players around. In the news post, they state a tier 9 star will take roughly up to 90 minutes to deplete all the way to zero before the star disappears. Using some bad mental math, uh, it'd be about 10 minutes of AFK for players for each tier before they would have to click again. So it's six clicks an hour to get like 30 to 40k XP per hour doing this. What do you think about the shooting star changes? And, you know, something that we've uh, seen like since that is that like there are random worlds that will completely fill up or crash because these worlds go from 400 or like 600 people in it to 2k people and just the world just crashes and is unstable but what do you think about the shooting stars changes um oh boy yeah no i i really hate it like the starting off with the fact that it was unpulled like i feel like the fact that it was unpulled makes it also seem more like a knee-jerk reaction like if they had pulled it, <clears throat> it would have felt less like a knee-jerk reaction to Duke Mining. But the fact that it was unpulled and, I mean, seems like as per usual, like, untested most likely with the leg that um, that world hit, uh, that is just, like, a really, a really bad um, move on their part. And then, uh, like, I mean, honestly, like, the XP rates aren't the worst thing at all. Like, but I really fucking wish that they just gave a little bit more XP and they would remove the uh, the Stardust from them because obviously that's, it's like a pretty cringe reward to get like stored XP for just AFKing. I don't know, it just doesn't really make sense to me. So I wish that that was gone. Um, and yeah, or like even if it wasn't more XP, like some sort of GP reward, I guess. Like, I don't know, Just I just hope that they don't consider like going in that direction of just giving like little xp boosts or things like that for future methods and yeah hopefully like they don't um try to do this kind of thing with other methods as well so i'm curious to see how they're going to fix the the world leg stuff i know they've like made some suggestions but we'll we'll, we'll see what were some of the suggestions they said uh, i can't remember like exactly what it was world. but yeah like yeah like, like, like worlds. yeah yeah, just permanent worlds or some shit. I don't know. Like permanent yeah. star worlds? Yeah, not like the star is permanent, but like just like rotating on like five different worlds or something. Okay. 
I don't. I, I guess I don't even I don't know how, how much that would well. help. Like, uh, like, I mean, I'm. I, I don't know. I'm, there's probably it's probably obvious, but I don't see how it would help a ton I'd, right off the top of my head. The but, mechanics, but that's what they suggested. Something along those lines. Yeah, and um, yeah, I guess like a lot of what I was gonna say is probably more to the next question related. So I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Uh, I think that it's a pretty bad update just because of, like, as a reaction to the Duke thing, uh, I, I again, like, I don't think that mining was problematic. Like, there were so many different ways for mining to be trained that it didn't need, like, what is now, like, you know, if you factor in the amount of people that are doing it, like, it's the most busted mining method that has ever happened to the game. Like, mining has been one of the absolute most updated skills in the game. If you look at how it was when the game initially came out, like is 2s 2g uh and that that was it there was there was no mother load so like they came out with mother load they've updated mother load like three four times they've more than that but like they've added this expansion area to mother load they've come out with blast mining which was good at the time that it came out volcanic mine uh like a lot of people even do amylase as um I'm sorry. <laughs> Amethyst. 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 <laughs> so there. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, might as well just give marks at the stars. All in that, yeah. yeah fuck <laughs> it. You give them whatever they want. Like the, the the skill has so many different um popular methods for training it that, and even the stars prior to this buff like were were like a viable thing because like people needed to do that at, at at the minimum for the ring. And then on top of that, people would do that for the cosmetic things that it would add to the prospector outfit. Yeah, it giving thirty to forty k an hour is pretty wild, given that oh, it's... it's more like twenty five, like long term ish. Twenty five. Like if you factor in the ring, isn't it like thirty to forty k? Or like the yeah. Dust? If you add yeah, the like Stardust buff, from, oh, yeah, okay. was yeah. like the like the effect of yeah. Okay, that's wild for five five or six clicks an hour and yeah it's problematic in that it's also crashing worlds disconnecting me i don't like it i think it's really stupid and yeah like the xp per hour for this you know like if, if people wanted 10k an hour um super afk mining xp and you, you wanted to uh reward those players by giving them essentially duke again then, all right, at the bare, at least cut this XP down to 10k an hour. Put it at like what the, those Duke rates were. So I've actually started doing the shooting stars as my zero time, and I I think this shit's like super overpowered. Like it is way too AFK. Like in my opinion, I think the AFK time needs to be like cut in half, maybe even more. Um, I think the effect of F rate's like 0.3 which is pretty similar to Redwoods. So basically, Jagex just made mining Redwoods for the skill. Um, yeah, I think it's a pretty shit update. Like, I don't really like Jagex when they go down the route of just trying to make bland, boring content that has, like, nothing to it. Just a, a piece, like, the, the casuals who don't like skilling. They just want AFK XP. I think it's a pretty bad update. Yeah. Does the fact yeah, that I this think... is make it worse? Well, I think they never pull balancing changes, so, like, um, I guess kind of does make it worse. It, like, as you said, it's just a knee-jerk reaction. I don't really think they put much thought into trying to solving the mining issue that the community has. They just gave them some bland dog shit content instead of trying to think of an actual good solution, which I think is what the Pan Jagex have had for most skilling updates <laughs> in the past. Yeah, I think it's, like, it's probably the most, like, ridiculous update that RuneScape's had in a really long time. Like, the AFK-ness is kind of insane. But the other thing that, like, people aren't... Well, maybe they are considering it, but, like, it's also super AFK because they added, like, the 25-minute logout plugin. Yeah. Like, if that wasn't in the game, then it wouldn't five wrong. minutes would still be, like, the AFK timer. Yeah. So it wouldn't be nearly as AFK. But because that plugin's in the game, like, it is. So that's like one thing that I will bring up about the stars is that the only reason why it is so AFK is because of the plugin. And then, um, good point. Oh, and then, uh, the solution that I had to it was kind of actually, it was actually like the opposite of what Onyx said. Like, I think it's better if people get a significantly lower rate at the, uh, the actual star, but actually 
make Stardust like better because I, th I think it's better if people go and use the Stardust at like a real method as opposed to like training all the way just like mining the star itself. Yeah, I, I think uh, one of the saving graces about um, the Stardust is that you actually have to go to Granite or something to get the most out of it. Yeah, but like, I'd think... rather see people doing that than get 25k and be happy with it and just do it the entire way. Like I'd rather it be like, I don't know, like 8k XP an hour, but then they have to go to do Granite to like get the benefit. I think yeah, that's a I think, better solution. I think uh, some screenshots I've seen is it's like 25k per hour, like long term. And uh, if you don't use the dust, then I think that makes a little bit more sense than like 30 to 40k. And uh, yeah, I don't think most players are going to do granite. So I don't think it's that bad, but I do think they should uh, cut down the, the tier one and tier two. AFK time from like 20 minutes to 10. Does, does it like work if you like get dust? Can you just toss it on your ring and then does it work the star itself or no? No, no idea. No. Probably not, no. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I kind of, that's kind of what I thought it did. So I thought that's just what people were doing. Yeah, I, I, I think... Uh, dust glitch. I think the change does make sense from like design perspective because like the competition for resource thing was kind of annoying. Like you can scout your own star, but a clan can come in and just delete it in five minutes. Yeah. So that seemed kind of dumb. The reason why I had that idea too was like, it kind of reminds me almost like if you make the dust, the thing that you go and use, it kind of reminds me almost like a, like guardians of the rift. Like I know that that's like meta on like certain game modes. Like I know UIM, you guys actually like do it as like your training method, but like, I kind of like how guardians of the rift, you kind of went there, got like the rewards and then went and did regular rune crafting with like the benefit. Yeah. It's, it's too competitive with uh MLM, I think. Yeah. Do you think a better solution would be like, rather than them making like a whole, an all, an, another bunch of overhauls to shooting stars do you think just simply uh disbanding the uh log out timer from 25 minutes uh would be like more likely that something that they would do or would i mean i think that that, that shit's broken yeah, like it's pretty the nice. fact that the fact that they added that to rune light is do. insane what do you say sorry i said i think that the logout timer is more of the issue with all these like quote-unquote afk methods because yeah. like you said that it would only be like a five minute timer without any interaction i think that would balance the shooting stars like pretty well if you had to like you have to click every five minutes instead of every 10 and 20 make it a lot more balanced in my opinion if they did get rid of that yeah i agree All right. Uh, in the Shooting Stars buff post, they acknowledged the Duke mining method, and in regards to the Shooting Star buff, they stated, no more pesky fellow players interfering with your precious AFK time. Do you think that it's problematic that they are promoting AFK to this extent and, you know, even considering it precious? Just what, what are your thoughts on the wording that they had in that? Um, I don't think it's, like, inherently wrong to, like, talk about afk like for them to like know that certain things in the game are afk but i also think like th they kind of brought in like a completely new player base when COVID happened like i feel like work from home players are like a big majority of people that like skill right now so like uh like the game shouldn't be balanced around those players just because like they pick the game up during COVID and they work from home and they want to get gains like while they work like it, that shouldn't be just like how the game is balanced and it seems like that's like the direction that they want to go in is kind of like to appease to just the massive amount of people that started playing during that time. Yeah, I like, agree with JWIP pretty much. I don't think it's like that problematic that they are acknowledging AFK. I guess I think it's just a little cute thing they put in the post just to uh, make I don't know like the casual players chuckle or something. <laughs> I think it's just too big of a deal. Like everyone knows it exists. <laughs> 
Yeah, I just I wanted to put the question in there because when I was reading the news post, I it, it seems so out of place. Like I, you know, the, with the evolution of how the news posts have been written over the last ten and a half years, seeing how how they've been written and you know being able to kind of tell who it is that's writing based on the how it is, but I just it, sh- it shows to me that they don't give a fuck about how broken shooting stars are and. That's like, you know, what one of the things that was mentioned on the last podcast was um, like plundering talking about, I think, Melvor Idol. I decided to check it out. Literally the worst game that I have ever played uh, <laughs> since, since, since since finishing 200 mil. It's kind of fun. Like, I, 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 I like I, it. I have like a fat gaming spreadsheet of like stuff that uh like games that i wanted to play that i like i compiled over you know like the seven years of neglecting everything other than runescape and i've been going through and playing some of them and i've kind of like given my reviews and i have like a tier list and shit like that for everything real stupid just you know shit but uh like on my tier list it is the only game i have played that is in f tier and I've got like That's probably crazy. forty <laughs> games on it uh, so far. And I mean, I wouldn't even like consider that like a game though. Well, it's, it's like just, yeah. like, every like hour you just look at it and see, oh, I just put it on his list well, now. Well, I mean, <laughs> like if you ask if you ask some people the way that the Duke mining is like that's like you're still yeah, playing a game. Fair. Yeah, but I think I thought it, it was interesting that they were just so heavy talking about AFK. Good. Nah, you're right. I think it is kind of weird for a game company to not so much endorse, but like to give a nod to a behavior that actively involves not playing their game. And I think like at this point, AFK stuff is like a huge part of RS. So it makes sense why they'd like mention that. But yeah, I think it's more of a reflection of the current player base wanting AFK skills and uh i think they're kind of leaning into that idle sort of gameplay with that sentence yeah that's tragic so i was i don't remember where i heard it but i remember listening to something that say bay was in and he was talking about how like kind of the issue is when they added the maxcape and people are like wanting to do afk training methods because you know, they feel obligated. But oh, don't say, don't say people. Specify that as PVMers and PVPers. <laughs> um, they feel obligated to you know like get ninety nine mining when like realistically you only need like eighty something to like complete your achievement diaries and whatnot. So I think AFK methods are fine. I think it's more so that people are wanting more of them because like mining has plenty of other methods. Like I think it was you, Randy, that was like doing VM like at work or something and it's like super low intensity dude and i like, i would do vm on a walk with my dog yeah like, exactly <laughs> like like vm is like way higher than these other methods they want and it's still low intensity mm-hmm. it's like if you want to grind the skill you can just do like vm i don't blame people for not wanting to do mlm because it's dog shit but i don't know i don't see how like 10k an hour is like appealing i guess What's the uh? What's the rate of MLM where you just like drop the pay dirt? Isn't that like pretty solid? Forty five, fifty k, I think. Well, yeah. on the lower level, it's like twenty ish, I think, and I think high is like thirty five. Yeah, okay. Did I, really that low? I thought it was so like forty five. Like, well, I was like doing it on your own, so like it would be like it would be a bit lower if you're like just playing that as your main account. But yeah, well, that's not there. terrible. Yeah, yeah. It's I feel like if you're diaried up, and they're like, like oh well, now I'm not getting them the GP from the. The ores. Yeah. Well, and you can do like the diaries and stuff and get better rate to think, but Yeah, like that alt was yeah. bad minimum. <laughs> There's like no reason for people to this. need to AFK to a ninety nine, because like I said, like you need like eighty in most skills, ninety for some diaries. It's like two to four mil XP. Which is yeah. not that long. Yeah, I I like I like honestly just hate that kind of like language that they use with that post. Like it feels like they were like almost like almost like scared of like the mob rule on Reddit and like they're like you know like that's what it seems like. Like 
why do you, like what do you mean precious afk time like this game doesn't have to be like any other game out there like it just doesn't make sense to me and like most skills are very afk mining is literally very afk with some methods so i think it's a really bad path for the game to go down like um i mean you if you introduce shit like this everyone's just gonna have a zero time to count and like you already see the sentiment like oh man maxing's not an achievement or whatever on on twitter and shit and it's like it's gonna that's gonna grow that that idea is gonna grow if they can keep going down this road and then if it's not seen as an achievement um the next logical step is like well why not buff rates then because it's it's easy anyways everyone just zero times it's uh like why not just like just you know they going to k an hour or some shit like the game i don't know what cater to these types of players at all like i don't know if that many people are like oh man I'm all, I'm just way too interactive for me. I'm gonna quit the game. Like I, I feel like they, I, I just feel like they got a taste of Duke finding and then like cried about it, being nerfed, and I, I just don't know why they uh, feel the need to help these players out so much that don't want to play the game. Like espe- especially considering like it's one skill. Like there's so many other skills out there that are really AFK. So. I feel like there's there yeah there's PVMers and PKers that want this, but I feel like there's also just these like people that like they want to like fake and fake uh, progress on their account. Like they want to feel like they've been doing shit on it, but inflate their ego a bit. But like they just don't. They're just like not interested in actually playing the game. So I don't know. I play like one to three hours a day during the week, and I prefer to like spend my time on the game, like actually playing the game. Unless there's something like actively have to do. See, for, for and for whatever reason, that seems like a a weird take to have. It's the people that are only playing one to three hours a day. They're like, yeah, I, I'm too busy with my seven, my seven jobs, my four kids, my nine cats, and my three yep. lives. That like I need this 10k an hour method. What? Why the fuck why even are play you the playing? Game? Why are you playing that inefficiently if you have that little time to play? Like, yeah, you like be I mean, yeah. you should be trying the stuff. most of it. If yeah. only there was another version of this game that did that well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, it's an F tier game, so I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, no, no, even no. I think it's about three. Three, three, right? Oh yeah, true. Ours three. If you about that. Yeah, like no more idol. Also, like <laughs> if all of that shit, if, if you can't do it, play fucking Melbourne Idol. I yeah. like I play this game to like enjoy the game, so like I don't know why people are like feeling obligated to play it if they don't want to play the game. Yeah, like the and it's just such a shitty argument. Well, I mean, you can do you don't have to do it and stuff. It's like if if you have that as an option and you just start playing RS, like you're never even gonna look to try to be efficient if you're just gonna zero time everything. So I mean, if you don't have that and you actually feel like proud of getting your ninety nine or whatever, like you have a more invested player there, but. If you have somebody who does zero times everything and just AFKs doesn't care, like they're just gonna yes vote every update and get a little boost when the next like PVM boss comes out and then quit again. Like, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, that's like the type of people they're catering this to. Like, it's just. I mean, I like logging every day. I feel like the game's been like kind of in that downhill slope, like ever since it's been based like mainly around like PVM. Like, people just don't see skilling as like even part of the game. It's like a means to an end. They just yeah. want to get the skill level up and then go back to doing what they consider like RuneScape, which to them is PBM, which yeah. is which part is of RuneScape, fair. but I don't understand yeah. why like people think that skilling isn't also equally as much part of it. I think that's yeah, also like, like a problem with the PvP aspect of the game too, how people like shit on PvP, but yeah. like also how some people enjoy the game. Yeah, like, I don't know. Sense. It would be like no offense to VMers, but it would be like fucking crazy if the only methods of mining was like two S two G or like three T four G. Like that would be such a respected skill. Like if if you know sure. even among Reddit people, like yeah. if you, like it. I mean, and I'm not saying that it should be like that, but I'm just saying like if we had if we had like one skill left like that where it was like there's just no easy way. Like I don't see why that's a problem. I don't think like people. Should, I don't think if you're gonna quit over one skill, like F God. I mean, then yeah, whatever. Who cares about them? Like, yeah, if you're quitting over one skill, you probably just like don't really deserve to play this game. Like this game yeah. is not for you at this point. But, yeah. Like you don't have the mental strength to get a skill to aid him. Like yeah, go play Melvore instead. Yeah. yeah, you don't even have to log into that one. 
<laughs> uh, so there was like a 30 second, uh, about like five minutes ago, there was like a 30 second uh, period Onyx where you were talking that I tried pulling up one of your tweets and then my internet started lagging and you sounded like a robot for probably like 30 <laughs> seconds or so. It's no fault no of your own. So when everyone, <laughs> so when everyone's watching this and they start putting like, uh, you know, some robot shit in the chat, like wasn't you fucking up? It was right. me fucking up. I was okay. trying to pull. I, I, was, I, was, I was trying to pull up your tweet uh, that you had. Of, Such a good tweet. Uh, the, the mentality. Yeah, good so I, I I can't actually pull it up. Can you please read? Oh for yeah, me? yeah. Or someone or someone. Yeah, no, I got you. Basically, I said I swear nine year old players back in two thousand five were mentally tougher than the mid twenty to thirty year olds today. Oh, uh, you saw someone with a mining cape back then, and no one was crying about how it was too hard. You just respected the grind and acknowledged you weren't there yet. Basically, like, I was thinking about back when I was playing, like, RS2 way back when. I remember, like, I was in Z-Skillers, and I went to the quarry. I was, like, all hyped up because I had just gotten 99 woodcut, like, from, like, fucking Ivy or something. And uh, I saw these two dudes, OO Nature, OO, and King Tazo doing mining. And I was like, dude, I'm going to get 99 with you guys. And I got to, like, 60 or 70, and, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, these guys are unreal. They're, like, insane gamers. And I, like, went and... I think I started like five tick fishing or something because I just couldn't do it and uh and like I don't know I feel like and like I wasn't like well what the hell like I should be I need an, a t 10 minute AFK method for this like and I was like I was I mean I was probably like 12 at that time but like regardless the point still is, is there I think it's interesting how almost entitled the uh, AFKers feel like they are to XP yeah i don't like that at all i feel like i had a similar there you go yeah um shit now i forgot what i was gonna say you just gg <laughs> all right um i was gonna say i have like a similar like look on back when i was younger because I, I thought the same thing about agility back in the day because obviously that was like before like rooftops and like all of that and like that was crazy yeah like seeing someone with agility cape back in like 2006 was like holy yeah. shit like that is like insane i remember that was like my goal that i was also like level three back then too well i guess i'm not now but i was but um like back then like my goal was to get like 99 agility and i never did it but like i got to like 95 and i still felt like pretty proud of that yeah yeah and like and to follow it up is like i ended up going back to mining like when living rock caverns came out it's like oh dude i can finally get 99 mining and like i got like 200k away and i was like this is so dumb like i was like I mean, I was probably like four, 13 or 14, and I was like, this is so dumb. I mean, so this is probably a little longer after, but whatever. I don't remember the timeline, but I was like, I just quit. I qu quit RS entirely then because it was so brain. It was just, like, yeah, like 200k off 99. I was like, what am I doing? Like, I'm literally not even playing the game. I'm just like clicking and running over, running to the next rock, and I just click and just sit here for ages. Like, it felt like the most pointless, like, waste of time I'd ever spent. So, I ended up just quitting because I was like, oh, this is, this is stupid. And then 99 mi like wanting to get 99 mining is what got me into old school. So just clicking in existing. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's what it was. And I was, and I was like super young at the time. So it's just funny to me looking at it now and seeing all these people like crying about that. All the XP that they're entitled to. Yeah, and and I've seen all, like people on Twitter saying like, "Oh, I mean, we need this for agility. Like, agility is you know, way too click intensive. Like, it's got agility is just awful." And it's like, dude, like, you don't you don't need it. Just stare at your client. Like, you can do other things on the side. I swear, like casual <laughs> players doesn't know that exists. Like, you can, yeah, you can watch YouTube or Netflix while yeah, doing I watch agility. YouTube while doing so like easy. fucking four G and stuff. Like, yeah, legit. Like, yeah, I watch movies up. with Sepulcher and shit. Like, I'm sure you can watch some YouTube while doing your yeah you know, little rooftop course. Or even like audiobooks if you like can't figure out how to like look over while you play. Like just you listen like to something, eye. podcasts. Yeah. Listen to this. Yeah, listen. Yeah. There's over two hundred hours of Hexus podcast material for you. That is more than enough for you to do already rooftops and get to uh ninety nine agility. <laughs> and and again, at the end of the day, like if you actually are playing and you get that ninety nine, like you're gonna be you're gonna feel so much more invested in your account and be like way more inclined to like keep playing the game. You know, yeah. whereas if you if you just you know click every four, four times an hour, like it feels you know, like a it doesn't matter if you quit. It doesn't matter what happens to the game. It's not like you really spent any time playing it. Like, yeah, I think uh, that's the way I see it. I think a big excuse I hear is people 
want wanting the skills to be more fun and engaging, but then you'll have people asking for idle agility methods yeah. when Sepulchre exists. Like, yeah. At that point, they just don't even care about actually having fun skilling. They just yeah want to ignore that big part of the game. I think like Jagex kind of ignore that because I think it's like a pretty big issue with the like casual community that they don't enjoy skilling. I think it's pretty dumb that Jagex think the solution to that is just to make really boring AFK methods. Like, I think Jagex should actually try and like put some effort into skilling content and make it fun. Like, I feel like they actually put some effort into Sepulchre. And look at that, that was like very good content. But I feel like the majority of the skilling content they release is just... And they just try to make it... a minigame. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a blueprint minigame, like, oh, you gather this one resource, have something that happens every two minutes, so you have to look at your client use that resource on boss like i feel like they just follow that blueprint and just be really uncreative and that's probably yeah. why the casuals hate skilling because jagex makes shit skilling content so it just makes <laughs> sense that casuals don't like it yeah and then they vote yes to sailing <laughs> yeah like one of the <laughs> like, oh, let me do more skilling that, yeah one of the things that i'm really not looking forward to is like all these people that voted yes to sailing or i shouldn't say all but 90 yeah, percent of the people that voted yes to sailing are just going to look for the most AFK method for yep. getting 99 in it. Meanwhile, you know, the six of us are going to look for the like the best XP per hour, regardless of what it takes to get it. Yeah, whereas, yeah, the casual player that voted yes is just going to look for the most AFK way to do it. So, yeah. I, it's unfortunate. I've saw it. I'm going to like theory craft that. my shit. Yeah. I said this earlier in the CC. I just think it'd be so fucking funny if Jake made sailing like basically agi and you just like can't like five minute afk it <laughs> you have to click like every 10 seconds no matter what like oh my god that'd be so funny give us water agility or like hunter pre-maniacal monkeys that were unpulled by the way yeah at well with the hunter guild they're coming out with different things so maybe that doesn't actually matter but Got a bit off topic there. Yeah. Um, it's just so easy to. <laughs> it is. Um, moving on, though, to the mobile on the 26th of September, Jagex released a beta for the mobile app, which reworked the user interface, among other things. Have you tried the beta? And if so, or have you seen some of the stuff from it? If so, what do you think about the rework? I haven't downloaded the beta myself, but I've seen like the, I don't know, the blog post or whatever. Not, not even that really i've just like seen the screenshot of like what the ui looks like and honestly i think the ui looks pretty good but i'm not really much of like a phone player so it doesn't affect me too much but i know some other people would probably be happy about that like zero atomic on the phone i just use crd for basically everything um i haven't tried it either but i do like how the new ui looks um yeah, I haven't tried it either. I saw a screenshot of the beta and actually thought the UI looked kind of ugly, in my opinion. Um, I didn't want to try the beta world because like, I was scared that it would like, fuck up my high scores and my temple would get ruined. So, yeah. <laughs> I was just... So I didn't want to go on the beta world. But Sadly, um, a worthy concern. But probably. I'd imagine the, like, how the UI functions would be fine. It didn't look like that crazy from the screenshots. I just think it looked aesthetically ugly. That's it. Yeah, I haven't tried it. I'm not really. I don't really like mobile either. But um, Chrome remote all the way if uh, if I have to. I mean, like Gemini and shit, definitely better in my opinion. Yeah, I tried it, and I'm I'm a fan of the changes. I like how all of the stones, I guess, for like inventory, equipment, prayer, and all that is on the right hand side, and there's one feature that you can disable walk here everywhere but you can keep like interaction with objects. So it's really good for Ardone rooftops. So you don't like fat finger the, the wall climbing thing and just run all over the place. It's nice for that. It is really hard to hit nice. that first obstacle <laughs> yeah. to start yeah, the course. Is, and the plank. when there's an Audi knot in front of it. Oh, the, best. Best. the best is when people drop cannons in front of it when you like just to troll you <laughs> i've never seen that but that's crazy yeah somebody's getting right. 200 mil once and i can't remember who but they dropped a cannon right in front of the first obstacle and we all had to fucking right click it 
Yeah, I've not done it, and yeah, I've been I've been actually scared to log into the beta because uh, I would only like play the beta on my main account, and like I I do have a fear that something would get fucked up if I was logged into the beta, so I've just completely stayed away from uh, logging into it. I play a lot of um, mobile, which we've got a question on that later, but. I'm glad that they're like they they've been do, giving regular updates to mobile um over time and I do like the attention that they continue to get from it which kind of shows to me that like mobile is definitely a huge success or something that they at least from a financial thing probably certainly credit to player retention percentages as a you know a supplementary piece to like playing on desktop so I mean, I, I like that they put a lot of resources into it and improving it. For sure. So what uh, changes to the mobile app would you like to see in the future? Like for me, what I would most like to see, and it, I, it's going to sound very uh, uh, the opposite of what my opinion was on uh, some of the other, like, afk things but i would like an idle notifier for like if my hit points get low or if my prayer gets low to a certain point that would be something i'd like to see improved because uh like when i'm doing some at this point now bossing on my phone um i'm not paying attention every second of the time you know rank rank one jad didn't uh, happen by full attention effort but like that would be the one thing I'd like to see is uh like the similar to the rune light plugin of idle, idle notifier I would like to see that uh, be able to be put in for like if your hit points or prayer gets low. I think the only thing that can come to my mind is when I was going for two hundred more fishing I used to do um like three tick fishing on my phone like like during breaks or whatever like work breaks and it was kind of annoying because well, it might be different now with the UI change so this could just already be in the game but like when you were three tick fishing and you wanted to drop the fish you'd have to tap onto the the drop mode for the inventory so like you have to spend like a few seconds just dropping all your fish then go out of drop mode then start three tick fishing again so i wish there was like a way you could select certain items that when you tap on them it doesn't get dropped it uses them instead pretty much just like swap left click on rune light on mobile um, like I haven't used the app in a while, in a while, so maybe this is better now, but like when I did use it, um, I hated that like every time I like would, um, like slide off of it and go to a different screen. Like I feel like every time I'd come back logged out, like I don't, I don't care if it like stops me from what I'm doing, but it was kind of annoying to get logged out every time. So it'd be nice to. You're on iPhone to, or like, Android. iPhone. Hmm. Was... Definitely Android. Better with yeah. That. Yeah, yeah, it is. There was uh, okay. there was there was some um something that in the uh like on Android there's something in your settings to where uh like by default it initially was set up to where like it would kill the app or like kill the processes on it if you went like 30 seconds or a minute without like that being your focused uh like app. And there is a way to where you could dis for like battery retention or like battery saving purposes. And there was a way of uh, like changing that to where like the issue that you were having, like at least for me on Android, I would not get. And you know, I could go, oh, okay. I could go four and a half minutes and still be Whoops. okay. Damn. Yeah. That would, that that's, would have been really nice. I, like, yeah, that's about it for me. Yeah. For me, I think uh portrait mode would be good. Yeah. And I, also, right now it's annoying how if you try to hop to a full world, you it logs you out and back, also, yeah. yeah, with two two factor and shit, it sucks. Yeah, both of my answers basically just went back to back right there, like the app closing just when you all tab out of it or whatever, and then also the portrait mode was to be like super nice, like like Onyx said, like I don't care if it like stops me from doing whatever I'm doing when I all tab, but. It'd be nice if it gave you like the full like five minute timer like it normally would. Yeah, all of my changes have already been stated. Have you guys ever tried playing with a mouse on mobile? No. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't even know that was possible. Yeah. It's so yeah. bad. 
it's it's a newer it's a newer like within the last uh like year or so of a change that they allow like if you have like a bluetooth mouse uh connected to your phone you can you can actually play with uh with it i've done a little bit it's it's not great can you like right click or is it just all like left click yeah you can right click so like it's it's pretty much the mobile interface but you're playing with the mouse you like middle click move your camera around and stuff. Yeah. Damn. Oh, that's kind of sick. Like yeah. it's, it's 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 like just a portable laptop. It's, it's super delayed. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's, okay. It's it's not a great experience. Like I I've found it to be easier to play just still with my fingers as opposed to with a mouse. Has that always been a thing, or is that like a more recent addition? It's it's a more recent thing. Oh man, I wonder if like the mobile only players like Diddy Boy like. Feel super devalued now. <laughs> I mean, you kind of do that for 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 self progress. So, yeah, no, I was I was joking. He could have got tick perfect lamp collections at the museum. <laughs> yeah, dude, like he's like, man, all these other new mobile only players are using a mouse. Like, God, this is scuffed. Mobile only would suck as like a. It's certainly an interesting way, but like I I, I wonder like do, do people that play mobile only. Do they play like when, like, say they're at home and they're sitting on their couch and playing mobile only? Well, like, they they could just move over to the computer, but they're just <laughs> electing to, or is it like, I, uh, I'm playing because I'm at work or I have no access to a computer? I feel like they're sitting on their couch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at least, at least he was quite proud of that claim. So <laughs> I've yeah. seen like people. Like a decent amount of people on Twitch just stream like them playing with mobile and like they're pretty decent. Pretty crazy. Kids, so like like I've seen like some people do like some bossing on mobile. Like I've seen someone do some poker on mobile on Twitch. Like That's I think wild. some I people just that. only yeah. play on mobile. And like I always think it's pretty impressive. Yeah, those people have to be playing on their couch. So they're just not running some poker on their phone at work. On the train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, how often do you guys play on a mobile, and what activities do you do when you are playing it? Whether that be like the mobile app or Chrome Remote and Desktop. Um, well, I haven't used. I've just switched to CRD recently because I just do shooting stars as my zero time. But before that, it was a day old, and I'd use mobile for that. And I'd use mobile like every day when I was just like out walking, like for my morning walk, or just doing day old in bed before before going to sleep. Um, so I I do I I use CRD every day, and right now I just do shooting stars on it pretty much. That's it, and sometimes like repot and nightmare zone in bed. Yeah, I I usually play mobile when I'm going to sleep in bed. Um, on Android you can split screen the apps, so yeah, that looks I'll so us- epic. Yeah, I'll usually be cutting like redwoods on the bottom and in like thirty percent of the screen. And like on the top seventy percent, I'll be like watching YouTube or using a different app. That sounds so nice. Yeah, that's beast. I wish I always had that. Yeah, Man, no kidding. Um, I use mobile just about every day because I get an hour break in between clients at work. Um, I've done redwoods. Um, recently I got all of my all the salts and stuff you need for the the Nexus teleport. I did all that like on mobile. Like, I don't do any high-intensity stuff on mobile. Uh, no, I, I, I kind of see mobile as, like, a supplement to playing on the PC. Like, I, I've got a shit ton of mobile time logged. Um, Like, I did... I've got a couple thousand hours of Nightmare Zone done, so, like, I really was, like... And I don't mean this in some kind of Jebram way, but I was, like, one <laughs> of the first people to start, like, actually playing on mobile. And this was, uh, like, in 2014, 2015, you know, three, four years before the actual mobile app even became a thing. Uh, and, like, when I did, like, I would. Uh, and, did you use TeamViewer? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I would <laughs> use TeamViewer uh, and then later Chrome Remote Desktop. But, like, I remember there is uh like, one of my, uh, when I had a, like, at the, at the time, like, I was, uh, like, school full-time like at college and uh then like i'd work part-time like in college but like then during the summer i had a full-time job 
And that full-time job, it was uh, pretty independent. Uh, and it was like some kind of essentially like contractor type work. And uh, I was paid by the hour, like $12 an hour. But uh, you had to just co- kind of complete the job. And, uh, like one thing that I would do, like I had numerous days where I would be able to be in nightmare zone, just, uh, like, you know, training my strength and, um, you know, like every 19 minutes I would like set an alarm on my, on my watch or on my phone. And I would then just re pot up in a nightmare zone. And I did that for like thousands of hours over like a couple years to pretty much get like 200 mil at all my melees. And this was before like networking and all that other shit uh, kind of became a thing. So it was pretty good and like EHP at the time <laughs> as well. Uh, so yeah, I did like thousands of hours of NMZ. But then uh, once mobile uh, eventually came out, like for, you know, like almost three years, I would play like. 20 hours a week on mobile uh doing fishing and i would say 90 percent of the fishing xp that i gained post uh 99 was done like five tick barb on mobile and that was like two to three hours a day for three years before i actually got it so and then now i uh just the afk the fight caves uh which i'm able to do relatively easy uh on mobile so uh approaching more i mean i just literally have if you guys have any suggestions whether that be you guys in here or the chat like i just don't really have anything to afk uh, do you have like a goal with the fight cave thing like do you are you gonna actually have a stopping point or is it just what you do because uh, you just can i just literally have nothing else i can afk on mobile so i just don't know what to do at this point do you care about like clogging? No, no. Nah. <laughs> because like probably too much else then. I mean, not not even that. Like there's a uh, like there's obviously like no completion of just like uh, Jad kills or anything like that. But like at least I'm seeing like progress with that in terms of kills and shit. But like there, there's no way of completing the collection log. I think if the collection log uh, was rather than it being like all these clue items like if, if they remove clues from that or cut down on the you know statistical in, in, impossibility of actually achieving that 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 would be something that i would have worked uh, towards but it'd be like rather than getting like all these different third age pieces if it was just like get a third age drop uh, or like from a clue rather than each and every individual one and so no, no, no thing. So I just have no nothing to AFK on mobile. So when I do play on mobile, that's generally what I'm doing now is just Jad. I think I'm getting um, close to more kills than rank two and three combined. <laughs> that's beast. <laughs> um, yeah, I I do like nine to ten hours a week, zero time of uh, uh. Well, I mean, I do more, but I don't do like good hours of art of gem nights, so. I mean, that's, like, all I've really been doing. I used to do more stuff on it, but, like, the stuff that I was doing was, like, Monkey Hunter and, like, Redwoods, and, I was, and I've was and i stopped that because, like, I really I really enjoy those methods, so I don't want to, like, AFK, um, like, spend my... Like, I, I like to... I'd rather train them, so... Um, hopefully, once I get more money, I can, like, maybe do, like, some herb, like, zero time while working out or something, but, like, aside from that... Uh, I don't really use it too much. Just gem nights right now. Yeah, I'm basically the same way. Like, I don't use it unless I'm like, I don't know, let's say I'm on a decent week and I get the motivation to just, like, pump it up even more. Then I'll do gem nights, which are, like, insanely broken, by the way. Like, that, yeah. it's crazy that that yeah, still sure. exists. But I, mean, I get, like, 120k. But <laughs> Yeah, but, like, if you go out for, like, a walk, like, it's really good for comps. Like, if you go out for a walk in the middle of a comp when you, like, just need to, I don't know, be outside, like, it's pretty crazy that you could get 0.9 just, like, walking around for an hour. So that's, like, yeah. mainly the way that I would use it. And then um, the other thing that I, I did for a little while, not very long, but I did, like, the uh, the sleeper lines is what they call them, like, where you just have a tele tab and fucking just make lines at the at the uh, Brock teleport and bank at the bank there on your phone. That's how I feel like training my alt for ninety nine fire making. Yeah, it's pretty. I mean, it's 
it's pretty comfy you with like bonfires. <laughs> yeah you can yeah, do that too. <laughs> yeah that is my next zero time plan is the bonfires yeah but i also kind of stopped doing the, the fire making thing too because i actually really really like fire making so i didn't really like doing it as a zero time yeah, it's been cool to see how fire making has with essentially no updates to fire making itself has evolved tremendously with all the multi-skilling aspects that are that you're able to do with it that just was not the case uh years ago fire making is a good skill uh larry would be disappointed if i didn't uh at least include that uh when i mow my lawn or when i still do i still do but i would cut redwoods uh when i mowed my lawn Remember that and story? I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd have, you know, like you could hear the sound like when the tree falls. <laughs> Just whatever that sound your is. Phone, yeah, your phone must have been really hot, right? Oh, yeah. fuck yeah. That, 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 <laughs> Just uh, a nuke in his pocket. Is the Razor, the <laughs> razor Phone 2. I put that thing through the fucking, you know. What got, a generic name. It, it, it got to work out every <laughs> single day. Uh,. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, uh, I would chop the tree and then I'd uh, just put it back in my pocket and wait until I heard the noise and then pull it, like pull it back out and get back to mowing. I did some shooting stars while washing my car like two days ago. Like it's beast. <laughs> like those things are just so busted. <laughs> Manually washing a car, Jesus Christ! You get a better clean than if you go to a car wash. Oh no, I know it's be way better, but the effort, well, like man, the impressed. car wash is like pretty far away. From, like uh. Like, like, on the, like I live on an island and there's none there. You know, my, my wife went to get a car wash earlier this week, and uh, it, it's an automated car wash, but they had someone at the front entrance um, to the car wash, like, pretty much handling the, uh, the transaction for it, which there's a fucking machine there that we used to be able to do on our own. And, uh, like, the... Um, which, so, like, she paid her, like, with her card, and then, like, the fucking machine was asking for a tip percentage. Uh, I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not tipping you for getting in my way of paying for a fucking car wash that oh a machine is doing. Yeah, they call it a uh, convenience fee or something. I thought it was ridiculous. Like, I, I would rather there not be anyone getting in my way, standing in in between me and the machine, that I can just say, "All right, I want this car wash uh, and." Yeah, here's my money. <laughs> Unbelievable. I, I'm never going there again. <laughs> Asking for a tip for that. Unbelievable. All right. Uh, next we got is the Hunter Guild. Uh, so we talked about it a little bit on the last uh, podcast, but here will be some topics uh, that we just did not have a chance to get to on the last one. They're looking at adding numerous forms of hunter meat. And uh, they have a secondary healing factor to it. The food will heal 60% up front and then 40% um, like delayed over time. They haven't really specified how long that time delay is going to be, but certainly interesting. The most impactful food that they're looking at adding are two different ones. Uh, is the Dash and Kebit, which heals 23 HP and 10 run energy. And the Moonlight Antelope Meat, which heals 26 and cures poison. Like, again, like, they have delayed heals, but these will be the highest healing food in the game. What do you think about these as a concept? Um, I think it's cool that they're trying out new stuff with healing, because it's such a huge part of the game. And compared to, like, actual combat mechanics, they haven't really delved into healing mechanics so in pvm there's like a bunch of stuff they've done with like prayer switching and like standing on specific tiles and like i don't know dodging stuff and there's not really anything that makes healing interesting yeah um i was trying to think of where this stuff might be good and like the, the I mean, if you guys have any other ones besides this, but like, I was thinking like Vardorvis and like, I don't know what's the, there's the also PVP boss that does like chip damage. Like, it feels like it'd be good for like chip damage bosses, right? Like, I, I can't tell where else like you would really use it. Because if you're at full health, then like the, the, it's not going to overheal you, right? Correct. 
So, like, it has to be at a boss where you're taking chip damage. And then I think it would be pretty unique, I guess. Could it, like, forecast, like, during the acid phase? Because that doesn't he poison you? I can't even remember now. I did a bunch of them. No, nah, you shouldn't take damage there. Yeah, but I, doesn't he poison you? Or no? I mean, yeah, he really venoms you, but... Venom. I don't know, probably useless. I think uh, the fact that it heals, like, on paper, just more, it'll be useful in a lot of places. It's just, like, we gotta wait and see, I guess. Oh, oh yeah, I didn't mean useless. Yeah, true. For him. <laughs> I didn't even think about, like, in-between kills or anything like that. Like, it's just better. Like, well, I guess you got bruised, though. I don't know. There'll be a lot of people, though, that aren't using, like, max gear with uh, inventory of, po like, just full potions to where, like, having some food, like, in place of sharks or anglers will be beneficial. Like, you could definitely see some good use. I, one, one thing that I really like about that is the, the delayed healing on that because then, I mean, it's not impacting PvP at all because, obviously, like, there's no way you would use that uh like as food in pvp just because that delayed heal you're eating because you need the health uh and you don't really have the patience for that in pvp so i think that that's an interesting dynamic that they're uh looking to add for it this is sort like one of the few updates that like i actually think that you know as a concept is a good idea that they have yeah, agreed yeah I, I think it's a good idea for the most part like i don't really do a lot of pvm so i don't I don't know for sure where all it would be handy, but um, but yeah, I think it's a I think it's cool that they're like like uh, Fimbria said that they're boring like options with that, and and it's better than just like tossing a new food that heals like two more health than the current best. So it's like nice that they're not just you know doing that. It reminded me, I don't think that angler fish were pulled ever. Like they just decided they we're coming know. out with it. I'm pretty certain that they were never pulled. That's funny. I, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I I feel like I uh it was a topic on a podcast actually. But all right. Um, so moths is another thing uh, as part of the hunter guild. It covers a three by three radius around the player and selects three players within that radius to receive a buff. They said it's not intended to compete with Sarah Dolman Brews, but to add a new vector for interesting mechanics that affect other players. Some other information about the moss, the Sunlight Moth restores 6 plus 20% of a player's reduced stats as well as 8 hit points. And then the Moonlight Moth restores 5 plus 10% of a player's prayer points. So... Yeah, uh... I feel like, um, did they say if it's like stackable or not? I'm assuming it's not, right? Like, there's no way it can be. Like, I feel like it'd be too broken if it was stackable. From what I was reading, I didn't see anything that specified whether it be uh, like stackable in a jar or, or if. Because, like, if, if it was stackable, then I could see this being like pretty, pretty good. And then also, like, the other thing that I was thinking about is like the people that would abuse this would probably be like boosters, right? Like oh, people yeah, boosting, would, like in it would a mass area. It would have a huge impact on PVMing, yeah. Potentially, like I'm just thinking of like I don't know boosting and just having to click that instead of having to click like a prayer pot on every single one of your accounts. Yeah, go ahead, be patient. Um, I just kind of thought of this now, and with that kind of being like an AOE effect for stuff, it could lead to like stacking mechanics similar to like reading in other games that could be adding into future raids which could be kind of cool yeah that is yeah it's like do super popular well i do like that they're incentivizing more team coordination stuff like that i think uh the group spells and on the lunar spellbook are cool but i don't think they get much use well i wouldn't know because i'm not a pvmer but I'm excited to see like how the top tier PVMers use this. Yeah, I imagine it'll definitely impact the way that the best PVMers do PVM, like when they're boosting themselves or like yeah, like working together like on a raid as a team. You know, seeing some of the really cool things that some of the like boosters uh, do 
for uh like for different bosses and seeing them being able to manage playing on you know like six or more accounts uh to kill a boss and seeing them like potion sharing in between every kill spec transferring in between every kill and shit like that this just kind of adds like or at least on paper it looks it appears that it's going to add just another layer of dynamics uh to it and it could potentially be pretty good for pvming so i'd be interested to see All right, so one of the things that happened it was as we were as we were concluding the last podcast that had the dead man mode finale going on. So, did you participate in that iteration of dead man? Have you ever participated in it? What what did you think about the uh way that dead man was handled? Um, I haven't participated in it, but uh, um I did want to give a shout out to uh, our skiller skiller boy JCW for Smacks and Dead Man mode, um, but I it sounded like a, it was done pretty well. I did read some tweet. I think it was from um, that that streamer foe, where like they were saying like like I don't know. It sounded like such a awesome concept that he said where like he thought like it would be cool if they had like some wa wall and like in the uh, in the game the whole time and then like at the very end like it started moving and like a zook appeared or some shit like it just like felt like actually apocalypse i i heard that it was kind of a letdown that it was like the fog or whatever but um but i mean it seemed like kind of a i, I don't know it seemed pretty well received i guess um i did not play this dead man but i think the concept was really cool um, I played Dead Man in the past a little bit, but I don't like playing extra game modes because I feel like it takes away from time I get put into my main, and there's like no reason I do it on an ult. Um, and then like a lot of other people play like leagues and Dead Man, and it's just kind of like free rank season. So I try to capitalize on that. Oh yeah, and real quick, um, yeah, I had to get a shout out to the old trance music tweet of Lion King when uh with the shadows and uh and Mufasa showing Simba the, the shadows or whatever and he's like, What's over there? <laughs> and, and uh and 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 Mufasa's like, those are the dead man worlds. Dem never go over there. <laughs> Tran Trance had Classic. some Trance had some really good tweets. He, he uh is going to be making another appearance uh, or uh um he'll be getting another shout out later on this podcast. <laughs> Ew. Great man. Um, yeah, I didn't play this Dead Man. I've never played in one. I could, like, maybe see myself, like, playing it just to, like, uh, do swapping to make some money, like, maybe one day. Or if I'm ever, like, burned from skilling or, like, 200 mil all, I could see myself playing one. But I think I'd just much rather play, a, like, a league, so that sounds a lot more fun to me than a, than a Dead Man mode. Yeah, I've only played the original Dead Man, and I... I only played for like three days. I got to like 90 combats or something. And I don't know. I, I tried PKing and then instantly died <laughs> and remembered why I stick to skilling. So I just didn't want to deal with that anxiety. And yeah, I think uh, this one was kind of a letdown. Like uh, the final area didn't really have bosses. It was just kind of like the other ones. So. How long yeah, has it would have been, been since the last time that they had a dead man? Like 2019? 2020? I think. Yeah, it had been a while. It had been a while, that's for sure. It was like, I remember the last time that they had one, like, like Manx, who's now like a, a J mod. Like, he, he was, you know, like, a particip uh, like participating in that. So I feel like given that he, like, not to say that I know his job description by any means, because it'd be incredibly ignorant to say that, but I feel like like his role is just like the dead man, like J mod. So I wonder what kind of, like if there's going to be a higher frequency at which uh dead man comes out now, like at least uh like twice a year moving forward. I don't know. I mean, it, it always ends up being very uh like, the streams for it end up being very popular 
and it always grabs a lot of attention uh, for people outside of the game for watching it. So with how you know little they end, up, I shouldn't say little, but like in, in terms of like businesses with how much millions of dollars they make, the th the few thousand that they do is like give giveaway is just like an an amazing advertisement opportunity that I feel like they're they're just not taking advantage of the the business aspect of dead man as much as they could or should be yeah i think they should really like run some more like pvp events like it, like like you said it doesn't really take that much money like we just run like something like every, once a month or something put a few thousand dollars in there i'm sure like a lot of pks would love to do that and i'm sure to yeah, get a lot of viewers as well like i think they're pretty lazy with that type of shit i need to capitalize a little more yeah i think uh dead man usually goes a little bit too long yeah, yeah people usually, seems like for sure yeah people usually quit before it even ends like i guess most of the top streamers but yeah they should do more like shorter evp stuff just like little tournaments like yeah sure. pks would like love that or something or even just like under like a They've had like PvP tournaments before though, like with a bracket. Yeah, like they, they've done that in the past, but yeah, I think they should do that more personally. Yeah, I agree. That's that'd be really cool. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully I mean I, I feel like they definitely need to improve in their marketing aspect and that'd be one of the easiest things they could do for it. Did you guys see the rot tweet where they had like Hired that that group or whatever to, <laughs> to hold up the posters saying like it got cleared or some shit like that. I don't know. That's hilarious. <laughs> God. Oh, I actually do remember that. Like the they were in uh, like the desert or whatever. Yeah, I can't remember where exactly, but they like had the clip. It was like day two of Dead Man mode, and they already had the clip made, and they like just like swamp that clan or whatever, and then had the the dudes start chanting the like. I don't. Know, I can't. Re I can't remember what clan it was. So I don't want to say, but like it was like some clan got cleared. Is is really funny. <laughs> kind of cringe, but really funny. Wasn't Omnia, was it? No, <laughs> that was the gang clan. <laughs> Wheel <of> blonde. <laughs> Ten toes down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, some of the possible changes, something else that they're talking about is some possible changes to the world 345 permanent dead man world is that no XP would be lost on death if you are unsculled. Uh, pretty huge change given that that has always been a thing and they had like a, you could protect certain skills. Uh, like I think it was like five skills you could protect that you wouldn't lose the XP for if you died. But they're looking at the possibility of just making it, you're not scald, you're not losing anything. So with that in mind, would you cons would you ever consider playing on the World 345 Dead Man and, and uh, consider going for a few 200 mils? I think it'd be kind of fun to maybe go on there and just, I don't know, try and do like a six hour, just an absurd one. Just like, I don't know, like 30 mil in a six hour. But like, I don't see myself really ever going on there. And also, like, I don't think they're going to infect the regular game with whatever the auras are or whatever. I, I don't see that happening. Wait, I think you're on the next yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, whoops. I love that. <laughs> Sneak peek. Um, but kind of piggybacking off of what Jaywood said, would like, Doing some like six hours of stuff would be cool, just like with crazy rates, but otherwise I would never touch it. Um, yeah, I wouldn't touch it. I mean, I kind of like the idea. I mean, maybe maybe PKers would like it if PKers like it. Like, I mean, hey, maybe black chains are a little a little less crowded, but I mean, I probably wouldn't do anything with it at all. I wish that uh, you know, like I. I... I actually considered it, uh, and I was gonna see if I could go for like 200 mil con, see if I could be rank one in the uh, dead man as well. Oh yeah. And uh, well, not a possibility. So that's a no. <laughs> but I think that something like this would have been a good idea initially. I mean, like how how many people are ever actually in that world? Like, let me see right right now. There's 163 people in that world. 
which almost well, feels like a lot. Are we running flawlessly? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that feels like a lot, given it, given it. But uh, it it just does not appear to be uh, an appealing game mode at all. Just uh, you know, like obviously the way that we all play is we play for progression, and having the possibility of losing that progression based on a PK or just killing you is one of the most demotivating things that you could possibly imagine for a game mode. So. That's why it's like definitely never been appealing to me, but at this point now, yeah, like I, I would have only kind of done it for like ranks and any of the ranks that I would have wanted to achieve are taken care of. So that's a no for me. I don't think there's actually anyone that's 200 mil all on it, I think, which I found kind of surprising. I think I looked like a while ago, so that could be different now. But I was kind of surprised that I saw those no one was 200 mil all and. I don't think I'd ever play it. Like, I think I'd have to get pretty fried in the brain to start going for 200 rooms on <laughs> Dead Man. So, yeah, I don't ever see myself touching that. Like, yeah, again, no. I'd probably just rather play leagues. The rank one uh, on Dead Man has 2.9 bell XP. And that, it's boosted XP rates on that, right? Yeah, it's like five yeah. times, ten times. Yeah, so. I guess it's still a pretty like, big time commitment. But yeah, it's definitely, like not some... no, it's definitely not nothing. But I thought that if you like one freak who just wanted to do it, yeah, I don't know. yeah, I'm just interested in progressing one account and leagues and dead man stuff like that takes away from it. <laughs> hey, real quick, I was looking at some of the 200 mil. Sorry to interrupt. Go, uh, don't say the name out loud, but uh, rank one, uh, dead man room crafting does not like room crafting's available. Room crafting is available, by the way. Yeah, someone should go for it. <laughs> I'm bonding account right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm tr trying to see them going through like every skill. It looks uh, besides room crafting, I think everything uh, has been taken care of. Uh, and it's kind of interesting. Like most of them only have just a couple, like two or three people that have like gotten 200 mil in it. Like there's some with a little bit more than that, but there is really not shit for people that have done. 200 mil like i think every like, yeah <laughs> clayton's rank one magic that's cool but, as far as cool. the name rc is allowed like the rank one rc i'm surprised that hasn't been like taken away well uh, though their 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 filters aren't uh aren't really the yeah, best and i can't be poo crap <laughs> <laughs> yeah you got banned for that name we'll take it away oh um, what the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Looks, looks like room crafting is the only uh skill that's available or like if you wanted to get rank one in. Sorry for interrupting. Oh no. Yeah, that's all I had to say. I do know of someone who got a two hundred mil RC in one of the leagues, which I thought was cool. Damn. Shout out to a Wizard. Stuff like that. Like he was oh, like going for two hundred mil on leagues, I think. I think Ooh, Labine? Labine? Yeah, I think he went for it, like 4.3 or something. Oh, That's man. wild. Yeah. Wow. All right, so the next one is uh, another update that the, they're looking on possibly adding, kind of from Dead Man, is the possibility of adding in skilling sigils to the permanent Dead Man world. And they said... While we're certain that adding the combat sigils would not be LP play, we've seen a lot of feedback about how enjoyable they make skilling. Do you think adding that to a dead man mode can be dangerous, given it will make skilling easier and could infect into the real game, or at least impact the opinion of the players that play on 345? I guess I like already answered this like in the last question, but I seriously doubt that they would put any of this in the real game. Like people already play leagues and stuff, and like. I don't think it would make people want them to like, I don't know, 4x the rate of everything just because they get used to it on the MM. I don't know. I feel like there's been a shift over time that they definitely want yeah, higher I rates. Very scared. They definitely want higher rates, but I don't think that I would ever get to like this point, like whatever they're gonna add yeah, to the like sigils or whatever. Yeah. yeah, like I, I don't think it would ever get to that. Like I think people are always gonna complain about rates, but when they talk about how enjoyable they make skilling, is it? It's just the increase in XP. It's not actually a change to the method in which the skills are trained. No, some some of them are changes. Well, that like, would be something that I'd be scared about. 
Yeah, that's what I'm because like if you watch like JCW streams at all, like there is one that like would like smelt the ores for him or or like bank bank the ores or something. The ores would just go straight to his bank or some shit like that. So it's like things like that. I'm very terrified of uh, but I mean I'm not trying to jump. Um, I don't think it would really affect him much because I feel like nobody would actually play on three forty five. Um, they'd be too busy doing their like AFK selling methods. Um, <laughs> yeah, I agree with mutation. Like, yeah, go ahead. People would do it to make me worried about them adding it to the real game because people like would want to progress their normal accounts. Yeah, for sure. I think if anything, it's leagues that has that effect because I think. Uh, well, the only thing I can think of is when leagues had a. Stackable clues. I think they pulled it in the real game not that long after, but I don't think it really has a, an effect on the real game in terms of like skilling stuff. One of the things that I haven't liked about leagues is that, like, I, and even Dead Man for that example, is that I feel like they use that as an opportunity to just try out any kind of like just stupid ass idea because it doesn't actually change the real game and they can use that almost as a, it's almost like a beta test of a wild ass fucking idea. Yeah. I, mean, yeah, I can see that. that. I don't like, so, you know, even though there's a hundred people logged into that world right now, I would not like to see that come into there. Cause I feel like like over time, like yeah, leagues, dead man, some of the stuff from that has impacted uh, people's idea around skilling and their idea around the game. And that has, uh, like helps shape their opinion for what kind of updates would be good and that they want to see. And I just don't want, yeah, that. they play right. leagues and then they come back and they realize, oh, this sucks with yeah, the on that normal note, rates. This is like a little off topic, but it'd be kind of cool if like in a future league before sailing comes out, they like add sailing to it. So we get like an actual play test. They did say they were going to have a beta testing for it. I think that kind of ruined the hype of sailing if they did that. If they uh, just put it in the leagues, the hype? Question mark. It might. It might actually make it. It might be one of the I few killed. things that they do to avoid it destroying the game further than what it will. <laughs> um. Oh yeah. So yeah, I'm. I'm like. I always think about this one time, and Randy, I remember this is an old Hexus podcast, but I remember when Dragon Claws were announced in Tournament World, we, it was <laughs> yeah. said, like, they, they will never come into the main game. Like, that's specifically the exact wording they used. And you, and I swear to God, you're like, I guarantee one year from now we'll see him. And I think it was, like, almost on the dot, like, a year later, they were pulled and came into the main game. So... I mean, yeah, I don't think that that many people will do three, four, or five, but I feel like all it takes is one Reddit post or some dude like, oh man, I fucking might do 4G if I can, if all my ores go straight to the bank or something like that. Oh, um, you don't have to drop and, it. Yeah, yeah, like there's, I, I think that that's like what one of them was was like, like it would just smelt your ores for you or or, or your or like your logs or something would go to the bank. Like I can't remember what they all were, but there's a lot of different things like that that weren't just XP boosts and. um and like it just takes one person to like post that and be like, oh man, this is like a great quality of life change for the skill, and it just get upvoted to the moon, and all of a sudden like they could pull it. Like I could see that for sure. But I mean, if like it was like guaranteed, like it won't come to the main game, then sure, whatever. But um, it's hard to see, you know, based off past like 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 I said, like Dragon Claws and shit in tournament worlds. Yeah, I mean, oh, they, they've kind of uh, historically been pretty predictable with the type of things that yeah. are coming uh, essentially as, like, test things and then stuff that then eventually comes in again. They've been pretty predictable with it, and I could definitely see some iteration of this. Uh, yeah. Come. I just, I didn't mean it should, It would be hard to see it not coming in. Like, I don't think that it would, but it would, yeah, like, it wouldn't be surprising if it did. That's what I meant. Yeah, I don't know, like, if the three, four, five players would care if it came into the game. I don't know if, like, there's any prestige of skilling in that world, so I doubt they'd give a shit if the sigils came in. But I think, like, 
Jagex are pretty stupid with the skilling updates, but I don't think they're like stupid enough to add sigils to the main game. But like what everyone else has said, that if the sigil is like three, four, five, and then they like get a taste of that, then they're like, man, I would love this if it was in the main game. And it might just something like that would creep into the main game and make skilling easier, but who knows? The, the Scar Essence Mine is, uh, or was added to the game earlier uh, this week. Uh, in case you didn't know, update allows players to gather Tainted Essence, which is supplemented with raw GP. The new type of Essence gives significantly more runes when crafting any type, with the aim of moving Ironmen away from hopping worlds to buy runes from shops. Jagex said this method will not be worth doing on main accounts, and from the testing that people have done so far, that appears to kind of hold true. Uh, however, what are your general thoughts on Iron Man catered updates like this? Um, I think, like, when Iron Man first came out, I think Jagex said they wouldn't, like, make any updates for Iron Man if I'm not Correct. wrong. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> but they have done it now, okay. which I can definitely... <laughs> I can understand why, because it's just been, like, a massive success. So, like, I don't blame them, and I don't care about them too much. I think they're, like, a little weird, but, like, I don't know, it doesn't annoy me or anything. But, um, I think also saying the main, it's not worth the main to do it, but apparently you can get, like, 5 million an hour profit doing mud runes at Scar Essence on a main account. So, what? it can definitely be, yeah, some like, something like that. So... You can definitely do it on a main to make some good money. So I think they need to maybe for change now. that. Yeah, for now. Um, on the actual update, like I watched a Sebe video on it. It seemed kind of like Fortnite looking and weird. <laughs> Apparently you can make like 500,000 fire runes in 15 minutes. I don't know if that's true. I just saw that in the comment section, which just seems insane to me. So I also heard that it's just kind of like a band-aid solution to a much bigger problem on like Iron Man. So, I'm not an Iron Man, so I don't really know how great the update is, but I've heard mainly negative things. Yeah, I mean, it, it goes kind of like goes back to the last question a little bit. Like I said, the Dragon Claws, like, I don't like that they have this precedent set of like when they say, uh, like, this isn't going to happen, it doesn't, it just doesn't mean anything. Like, um, I mean, I, at this point, obviously, it's, it's all right if I don't mind if they cater updates to Irons because it's been update after update like that's i feel like that's like over half the updates now are are specifically like iron uh you know at least like irons in mind for different things so i mean it's the same thing with mobile like updates won't be catered towards mobile it's not a problem that they that some things are but it's like just it sets up that precedent where you know they don't they don't actually have to care about what they're wording at all so um but yeah i mean like Fimbrio was kind of telling us the calcs that he did earlier, so I mean, it seems like it's a decent GP for a main, but or like really good GP, sorry, not decent, but um, but uh, for now, but uh, other than that, like I don't have a huge opinion on the actual update itself. I think it's interesting, and yeah, I mean, it's definitely fine that Iron Man updates come. However, one thing that I do think is wild, and that I do want to bring up, is that. The time for 200 mil, like the rates and time for 200 mil all on an Iron Man is far faster and easier to achieve than when I started going for 200 mil all 10 years ago. Like it, with, with the main, with alts, it's easier to get 200 mil all on an Iron Man now than then, which is just wild to think about. Uh, so That's that crazy. kind of shows you like the quantity of updates that we've received in general, not all necessarily directed for Iron Man, but the trying to get people away from the shops is i i think that's all right there was a um shout out bone saw he was cheating with uh a number of things but one of them specifically was with the uh, on an iron man and a lot of people were doing this was if you were to sell items to a shop on like your main your iron man could then buy them from the shop like if, if they were like base stocked items that were in that. So people were able to essentially start transferring a shitload of uh, supplies over. Like this is specifically aiming at runes, but it applied to many other things as well. 
and that was like the shops have been an issue since Iron Man came out and I think that coming out with something like this to try to get them away from it is okay I don't know if it's necessarily the best solution our Iron Man can talk about that in a bit but I don't know yeah I guess I'm kind of going to piggyback on your like 200 mil all thing but like the th- the thing that's like crazy to me about it is like I feel like Iron Man back in the day kind of like was supposed to be like a challenge like it was, it was supposed to like kind of mean something to be an Iron Man and like I'm not saying that Iron Man isn't like har- I don't even know if harder is the right word but like more nuanced than main is right now but it seems like so many of these updates like kind of remove the entire like idea of what Iron Man was supposed to be like and it only is to like benefit people who casually play Iron Man, I guess, that like also PVM, but are running out of like blood runes. Like, I don't know. It's just like such a weird update, like for no reason. Like, I don't understand why they needed to do it. Yeah. J Mod that needed some. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with uh, some type of catering. It just depends, I guess. So, like, uh, when the meta for runecrafting used to be to farm a bunch of Zora, that I think it's okay to take steps to change that to make it like at least a feasible to do like ninety nine or even maybe not two hundred mil, but I don't know. I think that's a good example of catering, but a bad example would be uh, giving Iron Man half the death cost of mains for no reason because uh, the reasoning they gave for that was because it's harder to get gp on iron man and th- this is not not taking into account that you can just throw all your duplicate items into the death coffer so i think that stuff is really bad but yeah i'm not really a fan of this update i i do think like the sandstone grinder was a good example of like good catering where it's actually adding to skilling because you actually mine sand now for your buckets of sand instead of buying them from a shop but i don't think this update really fits that because it's basically uh shopscape reskinned you're still using gp to buy runes just changing the feel for it yeah you know, I always wish, and uh, as I think about it to myself, like probably like every six months or so, is that like I always wish that I would have made an Iron Man when it initially came out in 2014. Like I would have definitely like AFK'd it uh, while going getting 200 mil all on my main, and like I I I wonder where it would be at right now had had I you know kind of just done stuff on it. And I will say like for for Iron Man, and I don't bullshit when I talk to people uh, that are like outside of the clan and i'm trying to like one of the things that i think potentially could be the most fun play style in the game is being a maxed iron man and pvming for gear uh i know Timbira, you mentioned like the rng aspect of it, it's not cool but like i for me like, I, I feel like that would be a lot of fun if i like was if i were to not be a main with like 200 mil all i would like to be a maxed iron man going and collecting uh gear like that so i have scar since mine is kind of interesting for ultimate because uh, aside from just being able to buy more runes you can make pure essence which potentially may impact the ultimate iron man rune crafting meta and allows the mi to be feasible um which would uh, you wouldn't have to do Guardians of the Rift outside of getting your outfit and your needle. Um, I don't like some Iron Man catered updates because I feel like the main intention of Iron Man is to be like self-sufficient, and I think a lot of the boss drop tables like shouldn't give you supplies. And like, if you need more runes, like you should be crafting runes. Um, and like somebody said earlier, that it's just basically a reskin shop. Uh, but you're still <clears throat> still buying the runes, and you know, I feel like a lot of stuff for Iron Man isn't s- sticking to self-sufficient gameplay. A lot of Iron Men that don't stand alone and use alts for Slayer too. 
They should all be de-ironed. <laughs> but I'm excited to see like what happens with the the bulk pure essence. Yeah. All right, so it's kind of sailing related here. Um, we're not going to talk about this as much as we did um, on the previous podcast, but for those who were not on the last podcast, what did you think about sailing? Uh, and how did you vote in that lock in poll? Um, I voted skip, but now I'm probably, I probably would have voted no because of how close it was. I thought it was going to be like 80% or something, but it's funny that, uh, I think the sailing poll from 2015, it only went up four points since that poll. So it was like 68 or something. Yeah. And it's crazy how they like spent six months of like the four best J mods working on this. And that's all of the game that they got. And I don't know, I think it fits thematically with the game, but I'm just like waiting for them to tell us how you'll actually train it. Because I've heard of like the multi skilling stuff, but I, the only real like stand. Yeah. Um, I haven't really heard of a primary skilling method for sailing aside from like some r- ship racing thing like agility. I don't know. I, I want to see um, how you would actually train it because when I think of a skill that I like, I like it because of how you train it. And if I, I'm going to enjoy a skill, it's got to be something I can like doing for hundreds of hours. So I don't really have a picture of that for sailing. So I'm not really sold on it yet. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I didn't vote in the poll. I just, I, I've never voted in like a single poll, but um, the only reason why I do that is because I feel like if I start voting into polls, I start caring like way too much about like what's going to happen to the game and it just honestly upsets me. So like, I'd rather just not vote, not read and just like play like, I just won't care if something stupid comes into the game. I'll just keep playing the game that I like. Um, and then what I think about sailing, I, I, again, just didn't read anything about it. So just no thoughts about it. Um, yeah, I voted no to sailing and it, it doesn't like, I can't put it into words why, but it just doesn't feel like a skill to me. I just in my, like, just how I feel, it doesn't feel like a skill. And like the main reason I voted no is because I just think Jagex are not very good at making skilling content. Like they've kind of shown that they're not very great at it. So I just have no trust in them at all to create a whole new skill. Like if they actually made some like, like Sepulchre tier updates, um, then I'd actually probably vote yes to be honest because they showed me that they can create good skilling content. Um, So I voted no. Um, And it's kind of the reason that Fembria said is that like there's no way to like I haven't seen like an actual training method for it really um and I think they're doing too much with it um I was actually talking to my girlfriend earlier today about the sailing sailing thing because I'm all for a new skill but it feels like they're doing too much whereas like with wood cutting you get axe you chop tree you get wood it's like a very simple concept and like herb lore you make potion and get xp and this just feels way too fleshed out to stick to like how old school does skills. Like even with uh, in RS3 with like summoning and uh, divination, like it was a simple step process. Like divination, you went and collected the energy or whatever, and that's how you got your XP. So I think they need to stick to a more simplistic approach when adding a skill. And if they do that, then I think it would be okay to add a skill i don't know what they would do yeah i think uh they're focusing too much on using sailing as a vehicle to bring in content that people already love like new uh monsters new areas new quest lines stuff like that yeah it's like i think the only reason the j like what you said like the only reason the j mods like sailing is because it just lets them add more content into the game not because they actually think it's going to be like a good skill that's what it kind of feels like to me 
exactly uh, like he, freely as well like oh this is a sailing thing yeah yeah it feels like a, like a transition almost like from like runescape classic to like runescape 2 like it's like obviously like runescape classic is like not a good comparison but like it just feels like they're just gonna add like so much stuff to this one skill that it like it's like an expansion for the game skill. yeah it yeah. becomes the game yeah it's like pre and post sailing <laughs> legit put that on the timeline yeah the uh um skill refinement discord has been fucking dead since it passed the poll uh a month ago so i'm i'm kind of concerned at uh like like I, i'm curious what it is cuz i mean i haven't seen or heard much of anything since it uh passed there and like uh mod light had to make an announcement like earlier this or 9 days ago just saying like hey we haven't forgot about the discord uh, but the, there's been meetings over the last couple of weeks about what resources they have, what resources they need, including who is moving teams onto the sailing project and general planning for the development of the skill. But like, that's, that's it. That's all, that's all we know about since it passed. Like they have not, like there's thousands of people in that server and I don't know, like it seems for me, like in terms of like the people like in there, like hype's dead, pass the poll. Okay. It's dead in terms of hype and discussion around it. Yeah, I feel like they haven't even, like, tweeted anything about it since it passed. Like, I feel like as soon as it passed, like, they haven't been on it's social media about it at all. Everything passed. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. It hasn't really gotten much attention since past, and w which is bizarre to me, given that it's going to be the biggest update in the game's history. Yeah. I don't know. But, um... Do you think had they not manipulated the polls by lowering the standards to 70% that uh, that sailing could have eventually passed at 75% with some refinement? So, like, on this poll, it got 71.9% while it was hidden in the middle of a poll where every other question got higher than 90% yes votes to it. Because I think that with some refinement, it actually could have gotten to 75%. <clears throat> and I think I would have had much less of a problem with sailing had it, like, actually achieved 75%. You know, even with the lowered threshold, like, say it got, like, 77%, I'd have been disappointed. But, like, it, it, it passed. It did, did what it needed to do in terms of, you know, every other update that had ever existed in the game. So I... The thing that just pisses me off is it ended up landing in in that uh, almost like that 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 sweet spot of yep past the lowered threshold that didn't pass like had it not been manipulated so I think that it could have uh, I imagine they would have pulled it a second time taking some things into account and I believe they probably would have gotten the three point one percent more that they would have needed but there's then the question of if it was properly pulled and had a pull of its own, would it have gotten lower than what it did being hidden in the middle of, uh, you know, being the sixth question on a 12 thing poll that had nothing to do with sailing? I don't know. I think overall, though, it eventually would have. So I'm not really like on board with the tinfoil hat stuff about like they planned it this way. <laughs> <laughs> It was announced less than two months after they left. It's like, real, there's, there's some correlation, but like, I don't know. Um, I definitely think it should have been its own poll. Um, I think if they had, I think if they had shown, like I said earlier, like how you actively train the skill or like some examples of that, it could have passed like over the 75% threshold. And, but I don't know, like just. No, I think uh, if it failed, it, they would have moved on to shamanism. I don't really think they could like make sailing any more interesting than they already did. Like they already marketed as like as a means to bring in content that people already like. So I don't think there's like much more they could do. Yeah, I'm also not. I'm not like huge on like the tinfoil hat stuff but i mean i understand where people are coming from when they think that but um i think if they had like a better explanation of what like 
the full scope of like scaling or sailing was, then it probably would pass by 75%. I mean, maybe I'd even vote yes on it if it like actually looked good, but it's just like this idea that I'm voting on. It's just like the word sailing. Like, do I want it in the game? Like, yeah. uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think if training, it would be interesting. I like might have voted yes. Yeah, even just like a simple video of just like, I don't know, even like early level training, like not even like yeah. what they would make like towards the end of, of sailing, like just like the, the first like 20 levels, but just show me what I'm going to be doing. Yeah, I just think it, given that they came out and said that sailing is not projected to be out until late 2024, it's just it is so, I, I just feel like it was so out of place being pulled when it was with what it was pulled with. Like, tell me this thing couldn't have been pulled in six fucking months when we're still six months away from it coming out. I just think that it's so early uh, that it's coming out. Yeah, I pretty much like agree with what everyone said, but like I, I think they definitely knew what they were doing when making it seventy percent. Like that was definitely in like the back of their heads when like making that decision. Like, I think it was just they, they made it seventy percent because they wanted sailing. And I think it could have got to seventy five percent. Like I think if they actually like put a lot more like video out of what the skill would be like, like everyone else has said, it definitely could have got to seventy five percent, and maybe like brainwashed a bit hard because in that one like the video of like um showing off uh, was it Valamore the new place mm -hmm. like I remember in the video like they were just screaming in your face like vote yes to sailing and I found that like <laughs> super weird like they were just trying to brainwash me to vote yes yeah I, I think so, Aiza was the one who was saying that the loudest during their presentation <laughs> It was something yeah. like if you if you are as excited for all of these updates as we are, then go vote, vote, vote. Yeah, like I, I found that really weird. Like, kind of put a bad taste in my mouth them doing that. Yeah, I mean, at, and if I can just butt in real quick, one thing about Ash, who now is the product manager, um, he never, you know, whether it be good or bad, one thing that he has kind of always been has been like impartial as to the updates that come to the game. It is like when he was a developer, it was, all right, this is the job that I have been assigned to do. I am going to do it to the best of my abilities. It doesn't matter what my opinion of the game is or what the direction of everything is. This is what I am tasked to do, and I'm going to do it better than anyone else that has ever done it before. Yeah, like his motto was kind of like, if the community wants it, like, I feel like that's what he yeah, just always yeah, said. Like, like, if the community wants it, then sure. Yeah. He didn't and really give like, a fuck. It became a meme at a point because of yeah. like that being his approach. But like, you know, some of that's good. Some of that's bad. I mean, some of the shit updates we have gotten is because J mods are like, you know, passionate about uh, putting stuff in, but the stuff that they want to put in just ends up being damaging to the game. Like forestry certainly seemed like a project that someone wanted to put in rather than like the community asking for it uh, as an example. But yeah, I, I, I think that sailing, like I was getting excited for it at the prospect of it. And then just the way that it was pulled and handled has re like really turned me off from it. Yeah. I think uh, a funny thing is when they pulled the initial, do you want to yes, uh, sorry. They pulled like initially, like, do you want a skill? Yes or no? That one uh, passed over 75%. And people were like, see, they didn't need to quote unquote manipulate it. And then there we now, like a couple months ago, it's like, well, clearly they did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I'm 100% down for a new skill at some point. Yeah. I, I'm like, I'm fine with a new skill, but I just don't think Jagex are capable of making a good new skill. So. If they can prove to me that they, they can, then yeah, sure, I'd vote yes for a new skill. But for now, no. And if sailing is well-received, how quickly do you think they could possibly look at adding yet another new skill? Like shamanism, perhaps, given how close it was to beating sailing in that uh, initial poll. I mean, I don't want to, like root against them to make like a bad skill so i mean if they do actually make sailing like let's say it's just a b skill and everyone likes it then i wouldn't be opposed to getting like more skills that are just as good but it's just it's hard for me to trust that a good skill is going to actually come into the game with like how the game has been looking like how like why would i think that they're not going to make like sailing like i don't know it's pretty afk and pretty boring 
and then dominism after that. I don't know. I thought all three of the skill concepts were kind of shit. Um, and like I said, I am open to a new skill and like multiple new skills over the course of the game's existence. But um, I want it to be fun to train because I'm mainly a skiller. I but I think they could potentially start piggybacking off if, of sailing if it's successful. Yeah, I, I would definitely see them probably within two years. Like, if sailing is a great update and people like it and it's uh, well-received and just... And also, importantly, their revenue just fucking explodes. I could definitely see that being something that they look to add at uh, another one in within two years. Um, like, shamanism could be. I mean, that, that one certainly seemed very different. Um and again, like I feel like if it had any other name besides shamanism, I feel like it literally would have been the one that would have won. The the naming of it, and I'll and I'll, I'll keep saying it like the naming of it was just so bad it didn't have a chance of winning out just because of the name. But, I don't really think the name's that bad. Oh, it's bad. Like, I don't think it was short enough. Like it doesn't have the the right sound to it. It it well, doesn't it feel old school. Like not that sailing necessarily is, but like it doesn't like sailing. Bits more. It has the ing so, at the end. Yeah, well, part of it, but yeah, okay. shamanism is just too, too different sounding. Yeah, like, I wasn't like around when they were doing the like voting for like if it was um wanted a new skill or if you wanted sailing shamanism. Like, I have no clue what shamanism is. Like, I haven't read a single blog post, and the name doesn't really help me like understand it. So yeah, and sailing, I like I fully like it's sailing. Like, I can figure what it's gonna be. Just by the name, but with shamanism, I can't really figure out what the skill is going to be. How long was it in between skills and like the initial version of the game? Was it like every two years? Yeah, like year and a half, two years. Yeah, I think uh, if shamanism or sorry, sailing passes, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna bring shamanism like three years later. I think kind of like how. RuneScape 3 has them every three to four years. That'll probably be coming to old school, but it's probably going to be like the same frequency as raids, which is kind of like worrying because like I think uh, oh, there's there's two downsides with uh, failing, I think, because if it does well, then they're going to be bringing out skills constantly, I think. And if it does bad, then we just end up with a bad skill. Um, yeah, I I just got back. Um, I think like every two years, and I think the the memberships are just gonna boom, and it's, they're just gonna get addicted to that uh, to that Michael. to that boost. Um, and I I do hope that they just like I, like I know that members like oh it has to integrate with the game, but I feel like I mean I I just feel like it's not a big deal if it's like just you know, just sailing on its own and like, I don't know. Um, but like shamanism really felt like, I mean, I kind of liked the concept more than sailing, but it's a uh, pretty, pretty scary. I think with like some of the game integrations. Um, if sailing is like, uh, even if it's a bad update, I could probably see it like, four or three years away because like i'd imagine that release sailing people would be playing it for like a year or like a year and a half and then jagex would poll if we want shamanism and that shamanism would probably take like a year and a half or even longer to make so i'd imagine it would take like four-ish years but i could maybe see like the investors like speed tracking that because if they I do make a fuck ton of money it. yeah yeah true but it's a, a good investor or just some greedy investors but like if sailing makes a fuck ton of money and even if it was shit content the investors could be like just run that back we want some money so <laughs> um if i had to guess it'd probably be like three four years and i think it's very important that sailing is a very good update and i think jagex knows that because if it's shit then no yeah, chance play yeah, like no chance, or they'd have to wait like so many years for like a new generation of players to come in that you <laughs> yeah. don't know how shit sailing was. So it's either yeah, that, never point. Or, like it's always years back, right? 
Dude, there is no, there is no way <laughs> that they would do that. Yeah. It would be, yeah. it would be epic if they didn't. Like, say, say they, uh, like, it, it would be like the biggest gaming news of the year across like all, like all games. Is that like if sailing comes out for the first week and the game just fucking breaks due to like. <laughs> I don't know, some kind of, like, game-breaking bugs where people are able to just start manipulating uh, money and items and Ellie's and Tebow's and Shadow's, and then rates are, like, 4 mil an hour XP, <laughs> and then they're like, all right, you know what? We're going to roll back the skill. Texas, you were right. We're uh, re- rolling back last week. Sailing ain't coming. That would be nice, but... <laughs> Shit! Now I gotta not play for the first week of sailing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think uh, why I said earlier, I said um, it's bad if there's like constantly new skills, is because the game is gonna look so different. Like after three skills from now, let alone just one. Like if in ten years this game uh is shit, then we we can probably look back and think. It was probably with sailing. I think other people will say, oh, it started, that downhill thing started earlier, but I think sailing is probably going to be like that impactful. Yeah, they got, a, they got a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of investment going on and their future projections for like profitability are, you know, kind of riding on sailing, which I, I feel like it's almost too much of a like, I don't know if I if I was running Jagex, I feel like it's kind of like a financial risk that I I would not uh, like embark on due to the potential uh, like of how bad it could be for the game. Like with you know they're just coming off of the most profitable year that they've ever had. I I don't know what like yeah sh- don't fix it if it sh- isn't broken. Shaking it up that fucking hard after a record year doesn't really seem like to me uh a smart idea you know like i don't know this could like definitely be like osiris's eoc like it could be it could, yeah like, it could just fuck this game entirely like i'm telling you it's just gonna be pre and post sailing they, they yeah. literally have the foresight of what too much fuck ups has done in the past and at this point you know like think of how few of the staff members are even around from then so like they, they they've got no you know, nothing to really kind of look back on as like, oh yeah, remember when we actually did something similar to that and this was the result? I don't know, it's just not really there. That guy needs to make another save of this game, I think. The one who, <laughs> <laughs> who just ha- just so happened to on accident. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, what are you guys looking for most? Uh, like, what are you looking to get most out of sailing when it comes? Um, I'm just excited for new training methods. Like, hopefully, there's like some sort of high intensity method for sailing, and I like pushing my skills when learning a new method. So, something that I can put hours into and practice and see improvement. I'm looking forward to uh, like the, what I'm trying to like get out of it is just kind of fun. Um, hoping that like I'm gonna tr- I'm gonna try to compete in it, like try to be top ten, top twenty ish. Um, so one thing that I hope is that I'm able to kind of rekindle uh like my love for the game, and by that I mean more so like. Yeah, I'm got like I got, I got days all the time where I just like yeah I'm just not gonna log in today, but like sailing comes out like I would like to kind of be able to get to a point uh, mentally where I'm back to where I was like when I was going for 200 mil all and like my approach to uh, skilling and gaming then, and you know I hope that it's uh, fun and leads to a lot of uh, like competitions and a lot of fun and. Uh, Looking forward to my swan song. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking of tackling it like maybe two different ways. Either I'm going to be pumped for the skill because they've made like videos showing that it looks fun and it is going to be fun, or I legitimately just won't train it. Like if it just looks horrible, like I, I'd, I'd be perfectly fine with just not doing it. So I guess it just all depends on how it looks. And then 
if it doesn't look like that fun and I still, I don't know, like I, I do actually want to train it, I'll just probably wait for like the meta to come out for it to see what the actual fastest way to do it is. Probably the smartest thing to do in your spot for sure. I think the most, the thing I'm most excited about sailing is like the HLC maybe getting like a little bit of a revival in a sense. Cause I think uh, like a lot of old players are going to come back just to like try out sailing. Everyone's going to be playing the game. I think like the community is going to be super active. I think that's going to be kind of fun. Just like, like everyone's probably going to be in voice chat talking about it. Like everything's just probably going to be like active and honey and booty. So that's <laughs> honestly the thing I'm looking forward to the most about sailing coming out. And who comes back from the grave. Yeah, I agree. Like it'll be, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what kind of methods and like theory crafting is done for the new, the metas. I feel like we're going to get a lot of like different metas over the course of like a, couple months and whatnot um like yeah i'm kind of with jay wet like there i might just pull the ginger Bino and with <laughs> hunter and just like hit hit the keep the one sailing for the whole account but i mean if it's like good then maybe i mean i do think if there's a group group activity it might be kind of fun to to um like play with some buddies but the main thing i want to do is um try to get the skills that i care about like done before it comes out so that I can just be like, oh, well, can't do that five skills in one method because uh, it's just not efficient for me. Like, that's my that's my goal. Yeah, it might, might almost be a good idea to just, like, work on your base, uh, um, like, XP and skills rather than... Yeah, going yeah, for the, for, for the average time. player, for sure. Yeah. But for me, I just, I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't care about these skills if I was doing it through sailing, so... Yeah, I mean, yeah. I certainly don't think that wood cutting is going to be involved, and so you're going to be. Oh yeah, that. for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, more like the mining and the. I mean, the uh, hunter is a big one, I think. Mm -hmm. It just gotta like make sure the multi skilling stuff doesn't beat out the actual standalone training method, and th it'll be good. But and I think I'll just go for ninety nine and watch the two hundred mil race from the sidelines and. I don't know, just talk about like theory crafting and the methods with other people. Yeah, you always come up with some like epics, epic uh, methods with the like testing. Like I remember you were doing like testing with the Runus prayers and shit and had some like pretty awesome mining methods and stuff. That... Yeah, your YouTube's goaded like when an update comes out. Oh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't actually find that. I just saw. Well, regardless, he... like you, you're able yeah, to showcase it yeah. very well. Yeah. Oh, thank you. All right, Fimbria, did you, uh, what'd you want out of sailing? Oh, yeah, just, I'm pretty much just getting 99. Get my max cape. That's all I care about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. I'm just going to stop whatever I'm doing at the time and just get my max cape back and go back to whatever I was doing. I kind of don't mind if it ends up being some kind of uh, like team-based training method similar to like volcanic mine in terms of like cooperation roles and stuff, which they've kind of alluded to a little bit in terms of like having, you know, going like have, having NPCs on your ship or having players on your ship. Crewmates. Yeah, which I mean, you know, kind of talk about like I feel like that does lead to the possibility that there could be like a boosted role yeah, potentially. Crewmates, two million an hour. Yeah, well, it, it'll be way more than that at this. Those will be streamer rates, dude. Jace, yeah. hey, Jace rates right there. Yeah, like I, I wonder, like how, like I mean, what, like runecrafting runners are seven mil an hour. I feel like that honestly is going to be the baseline for a crew. At the start, it's yeah. going to be like super expensive because like I'm never yeah. just going to want super high XP at the start. It's going to like even out. Yeah, it, it it that'll probably be how it goes, but it's going to be kind of sad if like it's not like you can actually like group up with. Um, you know your your buddies. I mean, like I'd prefer it to be a solo method for sure. But I mean, if it is group the group method, it would be a lot better. It'd be a lot cooler if you could actually play with like your friends and not just boost. Yeah, I mean, like a pyramid plunder. Like it's not like a crazy. If you're like if you're doing a duo, like you do get a bit of an XP boost, but it's not like crazy that like it's. That was, that was one of the things that I talked to the mods about on one of their uh, like sailing. Uh, like one of their sailing videos that they had that they were talking about was um, like one of the questions that I asked was the viability of it being, you know, like a team-based thing. And some the examples that I gave 
and like some of the things that I found being fun was Pyramid Plunder and Volcanic Mine in that yeah, like you can do those solo, uh, but it's more fun and you get a little bit more XP per hour doing it with other people. So I don't know. I, I think that them having that might be kind of cool for a ship. All right. Uh, what was... So this is just some miscellaneous things here that we got uh, that were submitted. So... Or not submitted, but what um, was your favorite method that you trained to 99 and then also your favorite one that you did to 200 mil? Um, I only have one skill that's 200 mil and that's fishing and I did like 50 mil at AFK and Barb and a bit of 3 tick and the rest was 2 tick. Um, that was alright. Like I didn't really like 2 tick that much. The only reason I liked it because it was like super easy EHP. Um, for 99... Probably Pyramid Plunder and just GE Fire Making probably be my two favorite methods that I did. Um, so I haven't done a 200 mil yet. Um, so my favorite skilling methods in 99 are probably... I did a little bit of one tick chins for 99 Hunter, uh, and that was a lot of fun. And then uh, I recently kind of... Stuck my feet in the water with granite, and I've been enjoying that. Dark method. Yeah. Which yeah. spot are you do? And also, the sap gets an honorable mention as well. Uh, Corey. Okay. Good man. <laughs> uh, see the like the favorite method that I did for ninety nine. So it's funny in that like almost every skill that I did to ninety nine, like every single method for getting it to two hundred mil, eventually changed by the time that I ended up getting two hundred mil in it. But um, in terms of, like, to 99, one of the things that I really enjoyed was Slayer. Uh, and that was, it was, like, fresh right after, they, right after they came out with the Slayer point system. Because that wasn't in the game for the first, I think, like, 14 months or so that it was out. Uh, and they had, like, a small stretch, I believe, where you were able to start getting points prior to the... Uh, mm, no, I'm I'm misremembering something, but like I I didn't I did really enjoy Slayer and doing that to 99. Um, back then there wasn't even smoke doubles either. There were no catacombs. Like it was like cannon uh, and uh, melee, and that was how you did all the Slayer. And that was one thing that I like. I don't. I just while doing 99 really enjoyed that. Uh, because like that was when I uh went for like my first 30 hour record that I did when Slayer was like 40k an hour back then. Uh, and I did a, like I set the day record for it then, uh, for 200 mil, a lot of things that I had probably the most fun with, uh, construction, <laughs> uh, rank, rank one and, uh, um, mining, uh, doing volcanic mine, uh, cause I was able to make like almost 20 bill while I was, uh, oh doing God. VM. So I had a lot of fun with that. And then Artie as well, like uh before sepulcher came out that was uh like what i did so yeah arty vm good times uh for me uh 99 rc with lavas was fun and my only 200 mil is also room crafting and that's his vmi um i just like the alting part of it how you could uh rotate with other people doing it and since you had other high level people doing it on the same world as you, it kind of felt like a community thing running with other people. And yeah, you could like multi skill, like Fletch. That was really fun. Did you do any crafting during that? I think I did like uh, 97 mil crafting with it, just a little bit. Jesus. Just a little, just a touch. <laughs> Hell. Jeez. Um, yeah, man, this is a tough, this is a good question, but it's a tough one. Um, I might be misremembering what I did. I might be misremembering the timeline here, but I think for like the end of 99 fishing, I was like, I remember, uh, doing barb and I didn't have the reindeer hat and like using <laughs> trick tools. No, like there is a tweet by uh war turtles where he's like, man, 20, the year's 2015 and you're, 
you're like got on looking for your cool snow because you don't have the reindeer hat yet <laughs> and i was like oh my god those are days are so epic like thought i was just gaming like snowball reindeer hat three tick barb like would do like 80k hours because my hand would get tired and i was like man this is this is intense but yeah those days are a lot of that was a really fun 99 granted that might have been a little bit of post 99 i can't remember for sure but um for 200 mil uh probably probably 4g just because the consistency and it feels like the most old school method like it's just epic that that's still the meta um but 1.5 teaks is a ton of fun and in cutty bar was a ton of fun so it's it's kind of hard to say but i just feel like 4g is like the most old school feeling uh meta left out there and so yeah yeah i'm probably like the person who got into the game the latest so like i did like 1.5 tech teaks to 99 and that was i mean that's still to this day probably my favorite like intense method in the game what a beast yeah and then um the other one that i did to 99 was solo lavas and i don't have any tuner mills so i guess like, that was the only like one good thing about starting later is like some of the methods were pretty fun already but uh jagex and sween addressed uh what they consider the botting issue there's about a five minute clip uh on youtube of him talking about the current state of of um like botting and what's going on and everything what did you think about his statement and what would you like to see most improved i didn't think like the statement that they were making or he was making was like that bad but you kind of also have to like buy into like everything that he's saying to make it like good like the fact that he was saying like i don't know like there's like two hundred thousand bots banned a month like i mean i guess that could be realistic but like what are they just like catching bots on like tutorial island then like is that like why are they is that added to the number because like why then how are there so many like clearly botted like thieving accounts like how do, how do you not catch those ones like uh, i don't understand how that could be possible if there's that many bots banned a month yeah like thieving hunter and then like orcath so, yeah, like all of those zolra zolcano yeah it's like so clear like that they're botted accounts like there's just no way they're not I think some of the poker books are coming back now, I think. Yeah. It definitely seems like they're targeting, like, the least money-making bots, because it's, it's insane, like, thing the, doing some poker and seeing all of the bots at the bank with, like, over 200 mil of paving. Like, who knows what more they've, what more GP they've made. Oh, 200 mil. Yeah. <laughs> they need to get that Jebrim. Escape thing. Yeah, rank one jump escape. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but I, I don't know. Like, I, obviously, we're not JMods, so we don't like know the back end with that stuff. But I, I do like that they at least addressed it with some numbers. But yeah, I don't know what else they could do. I think personally, I think it's just an issue of like bots being really good nowadays. And like being undetectable as opposed to like them not trying hard enough with their tech because it's it's a really ancient game i mean there's got to be some kind of balance where you should can't just only rely on just the uh like you know if they were to pull up like the vorkath with his volcano eye scores and see like the accounts there like but manually review those just it shouldn't take that long oh yeah for sure and you one one guy could uh just wipe out probably hundreds of like the most botted accounts by himself in one day and you can still have the, you know your little automatic process thing that they do have but have have some kind of manual uh review on accounts that hey this person has four hundred thousand zolra kills uh Let's uh, let's just see what's going on with the account, like a little manual review. But they they definitely don't have someone that does that as you know in terms of uh, enforcement or anything. Oh yeah, what I would kind of laugh at is like the the hundreds of thousands of bots that they claim they ban. Like, yeah, they're they're. What percentage of those are bots at the GE spamming fucking stuff? Yeah, yeah. Just the most simple version of a bot. Yeah. Just an auto typer. Go to go to this Discord or this YouTube channel for 
this nonsense stuff. Yeah, um, I watched the video. It wasn't really like anything that special. Around. I guess it was just yeah, like he couldn't really say anything else. To be honest, all he said was like, "We're working on it. You have to trust us." And like that was pretty much it. Like you can either not trust him or you can trust him. Doesn't really make a difference, to be honest. Um, yeah, I don't like they definitely are lacking in like the bot busting department. Like there's definitely just something wrong there. I really don't understand why they just like I don't know hire like three or two people just to go around fucking Gillenor and just ban the most obvious bots. Just pay them like minimum wage. It wouldn't be that hard. Yeah, I mean, like I just think it's kind of. I mean. It, it's kind of so, sounded like it was just said a whole lot of nothing to me, and um, like it it brings up like the point or the thing that happened recently with that uh, Vinny like two hundred mil player like like what the hell it, like is their botting detection system it's if the so two hundred mil yeah. player gets banned like that's insane that they that they'll detect that but not a Vorkath bot like I just I I don't um I yeah, it's really like kind of perplexing on uh and how it how it works <laughs> yeah one thing i would really like to see them do is kind of address the issues that real players are getting when they're getting banned now, like there were so many different uh people within the last like week and a half that uh have been banned like Vinny has 200 mil all he got banned um real cute got banned uh they're a top 100 player just um, doing nightmares zone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in Hex, we have Tristana who got a permanent ban. Uh, like, and he, these are. It's in Omni, we have hedge funds who got banned as well. Oh, he was yeah. just, I think, just only doing VM. He's been perm banned. He's just getting ignored on Twitter. So. Yeah. I mean, I know this isn't the question, but I mean, the support and like appeal systems. I mean, I'm not like saying that we should just instantly trust everyone, but I mean, the appeal system is insane. There's uh -huh. no no system at all. <laughs> yeah, I have like a mixed take on like some of the bands, where it's, like you don't really know if the person was actually like cheating or not, and like I don't know, it's kind of a gray area because like I know some people's reputations have been like compromised from like bands and stuff. People are like, oh, well, you were definitely cheating and whatnot, and like I do believe that if you were cheating, you do do deserve to get banned. I find yeah, it terrifying it's that Vinny got banned. Yeah, that's like, yeah, like that's what? crazy. Yeah, that's that's insane. Is anyone gonna review the system? You know, like again, like obviously you never really know if the other person, yeah. like you, you weren't the person on there, but like uh, that's someone that I I'd be willing to bet. Yeah, I will blindly believe <laughs> anything that he says. I did not cheat. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was that was like a that that seems like that should be like a tipping, you know, a tipping moment for like, like this call. needs to be looked into. Yeah, yeah, that's the words I was looking for. <laughs> All right. So, a question that Onyx submitted was: If you could bring back three skillers who have quit or burnt out, who would they be? Um. So. Yeah, and this is, like, same mentality that they have. This isn't, like, you know, like, uh, carry over, like, however they left. So, I mean, I think trans music, like, I'd, I'd want him back, like, full elitist mode and everything. Um, Pizuri would be one, for sure. And then, fuck, my third one. Um, oh, yeah, Ardino. It would be cool to just see, it'd be, like, he has that clip of, uh, of on the Omnia podcast back in the day saying he would be a future top five. It'd be fuck. I mean, it's impossible at this point, but uh, he came back and just like storm sailing and somehow got it, but obviously yeah, not really doable anymore. <laughs> yeah, getting the skills. It's like a seven k year. Fun. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's yeah. It's nice to see how high up he is on the app ladder though, without playing this long. Yeah, I know. But no, regardless, like um, he could still make it happen, maybe with shamanism or some shit. But I don't know. It'd be cool to see him come back and just like exact same weeks he was doing and whatnot would be pretty epic. Yeah, um, for me, I got Zarfot, Acid Soul, and Link's Titan. Oh, I, think, I got two of those on my... I think it'd be cool to see Link's Titan come back for sailing, and uh, I really like Acid Soul's view on the game. And 
Zarfa was obviously the guy that popularized uh, pick manipulation, and I I want I don't necessarily think like these players should come back and like actually play, but at least be like active in the community. Okay. So I I had five names. Um, I was having trouble. Oh yeah, I could go on too. <laughs> <laughs> was, I, I'm grouping two people as one. So I I had four, um, and then like before the, the podcast, I remembered that Lynx has not posted or like no one's even fucking heard from the guy since he got 200 mil all. It was like three years ago, almost. There was four. a screenshot about the grand exchange after 200 mil. Um. I can't remember how long ago that was, but but like he never, he, you know, like he he never made a video after he got it. Like one of the last things the we got was like months before he got two hundred mil all, and he was like, you know, people are asking me what I'm gonna do. I don't know. I'm just gonna do it again on my alt. Yeah. And like it was like a really dark and depressing video. But yeah, uh, like he's like killing himself. It, well, then, like, then he had he had the next one video. come out that was better. Yeah. Like he's like he. I thought there's another one that came out after that where he's yeah, like. He did. Clarify yeah. The most we have from him now is he still get, like updates his playlist like once a month at least on YouTube. Yeah, yeah I, I would I would, I would love to know what the fuck that guy's up to. Yeah, to be like I think I was reading his AMA not too long ago. And I think at the time of doing the AMA, I think he said he was twenty one or nineteen or something. That was like seven year seven years ago, eight years ago, maybe. Yeah. So he'd be like mid twenties now. So like. Yeah, he's at least no age six. No age sex shaming, please. <laughs> yeah. So uh, aside from him, yeah, trans music, definitely the best person I ever had the chance to meet and become friends with. Uh, then uh, Acid Soul, and uh, although he plays, he plays <laughs> a free play. Oh, that's a bit of, is uh automology just uh get back on the main like would have loved to oh, see yeah. him now. Yeah, I was gonna say him all. too, but I thought I don't know if it was considered like quit or burnt, but yeah, I agree. I was gonna say him as well. Yeah. Yeah, he's a uh, mining day all I thought. So he, he should. hasn't in a while. Oh no. uh, last name I forgot I had written out, Ned Flanders. Oh man. One of the best Good clickers micro. ever. Yeah. And he also, like, helped come up with a ton of methods, right? Like, it'd be cool to see these guys, like, him and Paisuri, like, they, it'd be cool to see them come back because it'd be, yeah, they'd be so, so good to help discover, like, different metas. I mean, if sailing has those kinds of options. All right, am I good to go? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, So my three would be Sayalo. Um, He was a high XP Iron Man in the beginning of the game mode. Um, Fat Clouds. He's just cool dude, game hard, uh, but burnt out. And then uh, Fruit Blocks. Oh, good fruit. pick. Dirt Rambles. <laughs> um, Fished a lot with him. I think I, I agree with Onyx with Ardino. Like, he's probably one of my favorite players of all time. Just, he was fucking insane at the game. He, I think he would have got ranked two if he maintained. Um, Second would be Jenny Death. I just oh really man, that's a good one. Up. And he's Australian as well, so I liked him a lot. And third would be Elixo, just so I could get his strings back. And same with Middlinski, <laughs> just so I could have the streams again. Yeah, for me, I would, uh, for like, I guess, like mechanical reasons and then being just good at the game, I'd bring back Dreary and uh, Pizeri. Oh, 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 Dreary. Yeah. Um, so that would be just kind of just to see them play like in current day. Yeah, they'd be and, so uh, good. Uh, just for like mindset and outlook on the game, I would bring back Trickle. Yeah, I actually just spam his YouTube so much. Yeah, like I just love listening to his rambles, and I also just like his idea of how the game should have been. Yeah, yeah. I talk to him every couple months uh, still, but yeah, like he's definitely top five, uh, like you know, person uh, that I've got to meet while playing. Great cut. And like every view that he kind of had on the game and the future of it, like ended up like happening. Yeah. It was like, and I would kind of yeah. like, for this me, I would like kind of the game. Group. This is what's bad for the game. This is what will kill the quality of the game. And, yeah. you know, looking back in hindsight, he was right on pretty much everything. 
And I feel like kind of like equally about both Trickle and like King Bino. Like both of them, I just like their yeah. view on the game. Like it's just, if I could pick a game to play, it would be the one that they would be in charge of, which yeah. is basically just like not changing. Yeah, yeah but they also liked like the tick manip shit. Mm-hmm. All right, what is or was your favorite era of RuneScape and what made it so enjoyable? It can be old school, it can be just, it could be RS3, just what period? Um, yeah, this is a super good question. Um, no, no offense to the VMers, but like right before <laughs> VM came out, like, dude, like that meta is like basically Rune Dragons. Like, is either Rune Dragons with like, like two or three rune dragons, maybe even four with Bibles. And then like, and then you'd also do it with all of RD. And then, um, and then you could like either scale all or, uh, like, um, amethyst all during your gatherers. And that, that meta was, or that era was like such a good meta. And then also the community at the time was really like, I like really, really, uh, good. I mean, is when like, you know, we had like la- like all these people that were talk or almost all of them that we were talking about, like the Lasby and Nardino and all these people were like going super hard and man, that that was just like fun. That was a ton of fun. So many people to look up to, like we're just great players, just putting in huge hours and yeah, as a it was a really enjoyable time for sure. Yeah, I'm uh I'm kinda of taking this question more so as like one I wish I would have played because I obviously started so much later, but like just off of like videos that I've watched, I feel like the eras, the era that looks the best to me is like 2015 to 2017. Something about that like time frame, like seemed like the golden age of like skilling from just like the videos that I've watched, like just seemed like everyone in the community, like actually like cared about like what they were doing. And like, they kind of like felt like it, it felt like it had like more purpose to it. Um, so I'm going to kind of answer this two ways. Um, it wasn't like a thing that I participated in, but one of my favorite eras was when fantasy EHP was happening and it was really cool watching those competitions go down, um, and watching people like play super hard. Um, and then honestly, like since I've been playing ultimate, it was probably like the most fun I've had on old school or RuneScape in general. Yeah, I think uh, it would be unfair of me to say any other era besides this one because, like, the era we're in is the one that's gotten me the most addicted to playing, and I've been playing since 2006. And, I don't know, it's just something about knowing other people and the same, like, with the same goals is, like, really motivating. And before that, when I played like off and on, I did, I wasn't into that stuff. I just like played really casually. Yeah. So like, it's never before I was saying, and like, I'll attest to it as, you know, being, you know, one of the like members of the community during the time, I, I, th- I think the, my favorite era of RuneScape was the 2015 to 2017 timeframe it was given. Uh, I, I fully agree with that entirely is, you know, kind of in that range as well, where like, aside from Link's Titan, like no, like th- there was still so much, uh, in terms of like just progress that every single person still had to chase. And the community I thought was really good at the time, you know, like that, that's when, you know, like so, some of the people that we talked about, like if you could bring back people from, you know, like if you yeah. could bring back someone, that's when they were at their peak, you know, that ginge trickle trance um as just some examples here but uh Automology. Dino, uh during that time yeah. frame as well like the i felt like some of the best people were at their best during that time frame as well and that was uh just like personally a really fun time period to be involved in as well like there were uh like the, the community was a lot more fun than i felt as well yeah like dude there were I skipped school multiple days just because of community, like, things going on in the HLC before. Because of just, like, it's like, all right, you know, fuck this math class. I'm going to see what's going on on Twitch and on Twitter for what's going on. Like, I I was having a lot of fun. And, I mean, I was in college at the time, so I certainly didn't uh, apply myself as I could have. uh, Because, like, I... 
I knew what the end goal was, and it didn't matter if I had a 4.0 or uh, th- like a 2.8 uh, in terms of like GPA. It's like, uh, that's good enough. So I just was able to re- like really be involved in like with how I was, like my, my lifestyle in college, it just worked out super well with schedule wise and being able to play a lot. So yeah, 2015, 2017 for sure. Um, This is kind of hard for me to answer. Like I started playing this game with RS3. I never played like RS2 or anything. So um, I don't like have any nostalgia really. The only thing I think I'd have to agree with like Randy, I think you said 2017, 2018, like that time frame. I was like, I was active in the, like on the Twitter space at the time, even though I was like 400 EHP and I just shit posted on Twitter, but I was still like around the community and shit. And I found it like pretty entertaining just seeing everybody like just gaming hard and everything, even though I wasn't very good at the game at the time. And it's kind of hard for me to say like this current era is my favorite because I, I think the game's not going in the greatest direction. So I'd play to say like the 2017, 2018 era. Do you think, uh, do you think a big part of that reason is because uh, it was before Link's Titan finished and there's still, like, more excitement about, yeah. like, the top page getting filled? I think yeah, that's yeah, so competitive. A little bit. Yeah. I think that definitely made the community, like, more active and, like, because everyone was just, it was such a more competitive space. Made the community more fun, like, a little bit more, like, toxic, but it was kind of, like, funny toxicity. It was not, you know, like... It, it was competitive toxic not just like all right you're a piece of shit level yeah down. you know is yeah oh you're on, you're on a 45 week that ain't gonna get the job done <laughs> i also yeah, think the like, game was like more pure back then too like for sure like people sure. like i mean i'm not like fully against like plugins like i I do like i don't know complain about them a lot but like i, I just like how the game was just kind of its base form with like maybe some ahk like drop down dropping like that's like what the game basically was maybe like an xp tracker and i kind of wish that the game still had some of that pureness to it yeah yeah it did closely resemble the like release the initial release but it had so much more quality of life updates to it to improve. Yeah. like i i felt you know like you look at like from release to where we are now that i think was the sweet spot where it still uh, uh, captured a lot of the essence of the initial like idea of old school runescape and they just were able to add and they had such a small team that updates were infrequent which was good but the quality of updates we got at the time were much better and it was able to be much more resembled to the initial product that released with player feedback on how to improve it whereas now it because like the the players still had a say in the game and the game's direction at that time now it's the mods telling us what they want to do and we're just approving if that's okay or not and that was still a point in time where players actually controlled the game and cared about it they didn't just zero (laughs) time everything and not care about what the hell happened to like what the future of the game looked like right (laughs) uh so a couple of questions uh we got left here is uh do you play any other games on the side while you are playing runescape like other than alts um i i would kind of say it differently like i kind of have games that i play while i play runescape on the side not necessarily like i'm playing like a game yeah, yeah, while yeah. actively playing yeah, runescape yeah yeah but like i play a ton of rocket league like as like my secondary game to RuneScape, I'll just, I don't know, go do, like, Redwoods while I play Rocket League. Um, yeah. I, I play a lot of Rocket League too, me and Jay with yeah. up the twos quite a lot, a bit too much probably. But, um, <laughs> during Tour Mill Fishing, like, during 2Tick, I played a lot of Football Manager with 2Tick. Football Manager kind of carried me through that skill because it was just so easy to play because you only need, like, a mouse for that game. I could click every off tick, so that's pretty much the only other game I've like actually played while playing RuneScape at the same time. Yeah, I don't think I've played another game since like 2016 or something. <laughs> I, I Damn, just... what game was that? If you CS:GO. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I I haven't I didn't really play games at all from like 2016 to like 2019. 
Okay. I just kind of like got addicted out of nowhere. Are you saying even RuneScape during that time, or? Yeah, no RuneScape. Not true. I still liked keeping up with the updates, though. What were you doing, reading books? No, just focusing on IRL stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, you gonna play CS2, Fimbria? Oh, I wanted to play it, but I don't know. It's I played it yesterday. It's not that. Is it good? Made. It's like oh no, it's just new graphics, new UI. That's about it. Nothing that crazy. I've been playing a lot of games on the side, like since I finished 200 mil all. But uh, one of the things that I did uh, that I had a lot of fun with when I did 99 fishing. Uh, this was back before tick manipulation uh, for fishing was a thing. So five tick barb was the actual EHP. Was uh like I I played NBA 2K and uh, you know logged a couple hundred hours on that while uh playing uh like doing fishing that was a lot of fun but generally i really didn't play any uh games on the side or anything like that while like i pretty much neglected anything and everything for years which is why like i eventually piled up a fat list of games to eventually get to although i did play a couple uh like pokemon games like on an emulator on the pc just because you could like play that with your keyboard so i could you know like do skilling with my mouse and like play on that with my keyboard without having to interact with that window that was fun um i don't really play any other games uh earlier on in like my escape career i went through world of warcraft phases um, but i don't really see another one of those happening anytime soon because that game is in the bin so um, i do play a little bit of like civ on the side because it's like turn-based so you don't have to fully pay attention to it. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, like I said, I don't really AFK during my free time. So, I mean, I can't really do too much. But uh, I did try to, like, play some Call of Duty last year when MW2 first came out. I tried to play with my buddy. And I tried, to, like, I refused to buy a foot pedal. So I was, like, <laughs> trying to toe tap my, <laughs> my Chrome remote and didn't work out very well. <laughs> Yeah, like t 10k or something. I was like, what the hell, dude? I thought I've been doing this for, you know, 15 minutes. But, uh, so that didn't work. But, um, I did, I do, like, remember, like, trying to play some silver version emulator way back when. Yeah. And, like, it never saved my progress. So I played, like, four hours and then, like, it just didn't save anything. I was like, oh, well, okay. it was that. Um, but yeah, I, I, other than that, no, not really. All right. Uh, what have you guys been up to during the podcast? I've been, uh, well, dealing with the disconnections that I had. I've uh, just uh, been <laughs> killing the giant mole. I got the Zolra pet uh, like the day after the last podcast, and I thought that I was going to do Vorkath. But uh, Vorkath, bad, man. Like that acid <laughs> phase, like just fu it's so fucking easy to die on Vorkath compared to Zolra. And to every person who was telling me that Vorkath is easier than Zolra, just no, I I, I disagree. It, <laughs> I'm one of those no people. Way. Vorkath is definitely easier, dude. I I find Vorkath to be quite fucking difficult. There, do you do you use True Tall at all or no? Uh, yeah, but like I was still you know getting my shit wrecked all the time. Like I Zolra was easy. Like even like even like when I switched to doing like the eight way switches, like. It was very, very hard to die at Zolra. It is very, very easy to die at Vorkath. Um, I've been collecting Herblore secondaries and making potions. I've just been chopping redwoods because I don't. I'm low on redwood logs for my birdhouses. I've just, Iron been, doing, I've just been doing in Bewardy. Nice. Uh, one point five teaks. That is a fat session. What a beast! <laughs> Two hundred six k per hour right now. I love how like isn't great, but uh, but I had to stop to read the questions. So every time you talk, I could hear your one point five teaks clicks in the Sorry. background. <laughs> yeah, it was kind Sorry. of going nuts. Apologies. That sh that should end up getting uh, edited out on the uh, enhanced audio uh, things that I do. Should oh, okay. we'll see? Nice. We'll see. We'll see. 
um, for like the first like 40 minutes I was doing Hardy, and then I just moved to Sepulchre for the rest of it. Beast. Nice. Alright, uh, so Ox is added it in here. Give a uh, shout out to a random player out there. I'm gonna give mine to uh, player Corgi. Seen him in game twice. Both times I've told him to add me because I wanted to buy his RSN. Both times he ignored me. <laughs> Fucking talk to me, man. Corgi, C O R G I. <laughs> if anyone has a way that I can get in contact with that person, please let me know. Oh, shout out Cape Kraken. I wish he never burnt out. Uh, shout I'm, out. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm going to give a shout out to Gamer Granny. It's just some like random elderly lady that I would run into at the Cather B farm patch on World 365. <laughs> and what the hell? <laughs> yeah, her son plays too. And his name is Gamer Son. And it's pretty cute. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I love that. What in the world? That's, that's crazy. Uh, I'm going to shout out Bala. What a beast. I'm going to shout out uh, Sir Braun, my cousin. He's getting close to maxing on his iron. So that's a pretty big achievement for him. And shout out uh, our boy Cloudy Sleep, best mod. And uh, and yeah, JCW. Like Check out his maxing series. All right, so the next podcast is uh, going to be recorded uh, like the weekend of the 14th or 15th. Not sure. That'll be uh, kind of up to the people that are going to be on it for um, the availability for that. The And again, like, you know, let me get, let me guys know like in the chat or in the comments, like, would you guys be interested? And in if uh, so, the I'm planning on having the podcast every two weeks, like with the like in a group setting similar to this. But let me know if you guys would potentially be interested in a uh, like a shorter duration, maybe only like an hour long. But but uh, the week in between podcasts, just have a uh, like me and another person in Hexus, just us having you know a conversation about the game and you know kind of spotlighting them a little bit. I don't know if I would consider it a Hexus podcast in terms of like the numerical numbers for it, but you know in terms of like content, uh, let me know if that'd be something you guys would be interested in. But you know, thank you everyone for tuning in for this podcast. Almost three hours, a little bit longer than the last one. And uh, another uh, final like, announcement here is that uh, I had re when I remastered the original um, eighty three podcast and the three highlights for that, uh, I'm going to be using some some newer technology and things that I've been able to come across uh, for enhancing the audio on the older podcasts. So those will still have the original audio on YouTube, like in terms of quality, but the Spotify versions in time should all transfer over to having an enhanced audio state. So uh, follow us on Hexus for more information on that, but we'll see you guys uh, in about two more weeks for Hexus podcast number 86.